Welcome to the panel. Another good day. Another Wednesday. You know, you know what time it is. We're going to get it in today. We got a privileged guest today by the name of Slim Duke. Well, that's what I call him. What's up? What's up, Slim? You want to talk to the people? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm excited to be here. I uh, appreciate y'all having me on. I'm I'm pumped to talk about some hoops with some some ball knowers. Okay, okay. Uh, as you guys see today, uh, we're going to get into our midseason rankings. Uh, it's the All-Star break. It's essentially the middle of the season, essentially. And so we, we're, we're going to break everything down right now as we see fit. But, uh, Chill, you had a question for the for, for everybody? Yeah, somebody brought something to my attention yesterday, and I want to know how you guys feel about it. So it's 2019. The season is over. After everything that, that was seen, the Warriors just won the champ. The, the Warriors just lost the championship to the Raptors. They won the NBA championship the last two years. We're in the summertime. Katie wants to come back to Oklahoma City. Forget the fans. Does management say yes or no? Why would they say no? Can't hear you, Big Ox. Can't hear you, Big Ox. Now, Mars, I want you to remember. Yeah, well, I don't get it. Why would, why would they say no? Well, the, the thing I'm thinking about is how he left. Number one, how he left. Number two, that was the same summer that they traded Russ. Do they trade Russ? Do they come off of him? Number three, who he went to okay. and how he left there. Am I good? It's KD. You yeah, we hear you. It's, okay. it's Kevin Durant. So it's just an automatic yes. It's KD. Bring him back. It's Kevin Durant. You can't, you can't let him set that type of precedence, Morris. I mean, me, myself. It's Kevin Durant. I think I think okay, you you we can set up if we can set up our pride and the disrespect aside, if we can set that aside, straight basketball, you're supposed to say yes. If you're the GM, you're the president, you're the owner, you're the fans. If you're talking straight hoop, you're supposed to say yes. I take it too personal. Get the hell out of here. You're not welcome. You're not welcome around here. Like, don't, don't, don't come around here. It's bad. Half the dudes on that crew, Mars, are still uh, half the dudes on that crew when he left in 2016 are still on that crew. That's and disrespectful. If we if we if we move in, if we're bringing him back, what kind of conversation are we having with everybody else? Is it just yup, I don't care. Kevin's back. Deal with it. What are we doing with Kate? What are we doing with Russ? Are we telling Russ? Can you and KD work out your differences? Because remember, right? Remember, KD went to the Golden State Warriors, who they lost to. So, if you look at that crew from 2019. If, if 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 I'm looking at that crew from 2019, let me. I, I want to make sure that I get my story straight. I don't want to. I don't want to give you guys bad information. That's right. They, they, right? I, George, I want to make sure. they had Dennis Schroeder on that team. Stephen Adams was still there. Hmm. They lost yeah. in the series. They were up against the Warriors, right? It, yes, they were. Yeah, they were up three one. Yeah. yeah, and then the 19 Thunder lost to the Blazers. That's where Dame sent them home. But that team had Paul George. Now they it's Russ, KD, and Paul George. Now remember too. Now, now remember too, Mars, which is very important. KD is out for the season, so like we don't get him this season. We get him. We get him the next season. We don't get him the nineteen twenty season. Yeah. So you run it with Russ and Paul George again, and then KD comes back the next year, and you have Russ, Paul George, and KD. In Respect Mello. No, no. Mello was gone. Mello was gone. This is Mello. This is two thousand eighteen. Yeah, Mello was yeah. only there. He was, no, only there. was there. He was there. Mello was not there in nineteen. Mello, Mello was. Not was that the year? No. Nineteen is the year Melo was out of the league, right? Yeah, no, he was. He was in Portland. He played in Houston for those ten games. He played in Houston. For yeah, like and, then, and then he was out, and then he went games. to Portland in twenty twenty. Correct, twenty one. Correct, one of those years. Yeah, but Correct. this is Russ, Paul, George, and KD. You are running it with them three? That's what you're doing. Mars, you're Yo, not. You're not. You're not accepting KD back. Bro. It's Kevin Durant. Accepting KD back. Yes, and I'm gonna tell you KD, why man. they're accepting KD back because we've already seen this happen before. Just like we seen the, the big announcement on July 4th in, what was that, 2016? Mm, Bron, yeah. No, 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 no. Bron's yeah. first one. The when early, early Miami. one. And then when he came back to Miami, the, it would have been a script written straight out of Hollywood that LeBron had. It would have been a sequel. Just like it was a sequel with him going to, uh, to, the, to, the, uh, to the Warriors, would have been the same thing, a return back home to, to bring a championship back to OKC. Now, mind you, Moss, in the 1920 season, mind you, Ox, in the 1920 season, uh, they make that they make that trade to get Paul George. 
because Shea is in Los Angeles. They get they mm -hmm. Shea, Shea is in Los Angeles. They get Shea and they move off of Paul George. Do they still do that when KD no, no. says that? He, no, 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 no. You stay with Paul George. We, we, so Shea you stick will get with Paul moved George. and the, they're going. The Clippers with the Clippers will still try to get Kawhi, and then Kawhi will beg for Jimmy Butler, and then the Clippers will get Jimmy Butler. That's what they're going to do. That's what's going to happen. Buckets made it clear he ain't want nothing to do with that. Buckets had then, made it clear. Then, then Kawhi not going yeah. to the Clippers. Wait, he had somebody else list. too, though. It was it was Paul there was, a, there was a few guys on the list. If I remember, wasn't KD on Ka Kawhi's list? I don't know, but there was a few people on Kawhi's list. But the Thunder aren't trading Paul George if they get KD back. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. In, in the 1920 season, Shea is still on that crew. In, in the 1819 season, he's still on that crew. In 1819, and, yeah, and in 1920, if, if if I'm not mistaken, in 1920, that was the bubble year. Mm -hmm. Shea is on that crew. Paul George is already gone. Yeah, but that's you telling me that you tell right, right, you telling me that you telling me that they not trading Paul George. Mm -hmm. They not they not moving off of him. The thing I'm mm -hmm. thinking about, Mars, that's is MVP Paul George, MVP Paul George, that's first team all, first team all NBA, yeah, first team all defense, one hundred percent. I'm just this is what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about how he left. I can appreciate your logic, Mars. It's KD, and I think the only dude on that crew from from the 16th team was Andre Robeson. He was the only one that was left from that crew that lost to Golden State. Everybody else was gone. But with that being said, that must mean that they got to move off Russ too, because Russ got traded that summer. Yeah, for Chris Paul. Russ ends up Russ ends up in Houston, right? Mm -hmm. Russ ends up in Russ ends up in Houston. So KD says he wants to come back to Oklahoma City. Do they welcome him with open arms after everything yeah. that he did? Because it's different with James. James is from Ohio. He's from the area. He didn't get. He didn't. He didn't leave Cleveland to go to to go to Boston. He didn't do that. Keep in mind, Oklahoma City is not a big city, too. Like it's it's small town vibes. Like they definitely Thank loyalty you, yeah. is a thing. Um, no, 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 no. Okay, never like, mind. Knowing country. what we know now, no. is KD like it's hard to get over that. You're OKC. You don't have the right to turn down superstars. I'm sorry. That's true You're too. Oklahoma That's city. true. You're not a big enough market to say sorry. <clears throat> top three player on in the planet. Right. We have morals. No, you don't have the right to do that. You're not the right. Lakers. You're not the Celtics. You're not the Knicks. You don't have the right to turn down superstars. So if a superstar says they want to join you, forgive and forget. That's what you, you have just to get do. over it. From a, from yes. a business standpoint, yes. you just get KD over it. KD wants to come back. You accept KD back. That's the rules. Does she Russ ask that old fashioned American story? I'm telling I you. I don't think, I don't think Russ all the time. time. I think he thinks he can win with Paul George and KD. So why would you ask that? Yeah. Now, she'll maybe tell, the tell Mars more. Nice. Mars Mars wants OKC to be that chick that keeps getting cheated on and and, and just apologize to and say I'm sorry. I'll never do it Come again. I love you. I want my family back. Mars wants OKC to be that chick. Chill time. If she can't do better, I mean, she can have some self respect for herself. I mean, she can't do better than Kate. <laughs> now Mars, remember now, now now Ox. Remember when when Oklahoma City over the last three years when Oklahoma City played against. Golden State, it was ugly. It was ugly between KD and, and, and Russ. It was ugly. So now we want to bury the hatchet. I want to come back, yo. I want to I, I want to fix this. They were just being competitive. They were just going at it. Is that they're all it was? Be, because they're going to be on the same team and then it's going to be fine. They're going to be teammates. I, mm. KD, look, Russ still going to third lobs to KD. KD still going to third lobs to Russ. Paul George going to be there doing his little mixtape stuff. And they're going to win, maybe. Chill. They're not. They're not recruiting him to come back. It's him. He said he wants to come back. Right. Yeah. It's he, him he, saying, right. "I want to come back." Yo, forgive me. I was a bit childish. I wasn't. I, I wasn't as mature as I am right now. I see that I was wrong. I want to mm. come back home and make amends. I'm I think from a management public. perspective. Right. I think from. I think from a management perspective. I think that they <laughs> they they get over that and they go, "Yes, let's do yeah. it." Yeah. Especially if you got KD saying that, like, yes. like that sentence right there, that would never come out of his mouth. I'm sorry, he's. Right. He, he he's too much of just like a I just want to hoop I don't care right. uh, type guy. But if he's saying that to me, I'm like, all right, he wants to be here. Let's bring him in. I'd bring him in regardless. But I mean, yeah, hey, Kevin Durant. Wow. It is Mars. I I I don't want to I don't want to leave out the fact that he was at that point a top three player in the world. But we can't we can't just push to the side how this thing ended. Who he went to, the fact that he's sitting out the 1920 season. He's sitting out the whole year. It's not like we're getting him that in the 1920 season. 
We're not going to have him. This thing between him and Russ. Russ has been the guy that's been the most loyal to the franchise, and we know how loyalty can go sometimes when it comes to franchises, right? We do know that. But at the end of the day, this is about winning, and this is about this is about generating revenue. So if KD says to management, yo, I want to come back home, can we work this out? I you're, from forgetting, you're forgetting the curveball. What's the curveball? The curveball is that I, I'm not playing this year. But by the time I'm healthy, y'all need to have Russ out of here and Kyrie here and James Harden on the way. Oh, boy. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what happened to exactly Brooklyn. Right we, got, we, got, we got to stick to the script. That's what happened to Brooklyn. Well, don't, for what? No, forget, James, Harden on, James Harden James Harden became a That was on, on KD's agenda. But maybe he does ask for Russ to be out, which maybe. I don't know. I'm, I'm not okay, trying so to that's true. Are you willing to do that, Morris? Are you willing to do that, Morris? For Chris Poole? Yeah, I'll do that. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Chris Poole for us. Chris Poole, Russ and Poole. Chris Poole, KD and Poole George. Yeah. Right now, do I, think OKC, do I think yeah. OKC would do that when they'll pack out Russ to bring back KD? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't know about that one. But <laughs> I, don't, I don't think KD would be like, hey, if you want me back, you've got to get rid of Russ. I don't think he would do that. But if they were to do that, then, okay, maybe OKC would say no. But... Considering they were willing to trade Russ for Paul, um, for Chris Paul, who everyone seems to think was washed at that time, maybe they were off. Maybe they were off Russ anyway. So it's possible. But uh, I'm not. I, I don't think it wasn't us that. yet, Mars. That wasn't that wasn't us yet. And I'm trying I to make. Gotta, um, go ahead, I got sorry, a question Ron. for you guys. Um, and Slim, I want to ask you first. So let's say that this hypothetical does happen, and let's say you get KD. Doesn't matter who's at point guard, whether it's Russ, Chris Paul, or whatever. And you got Paul George. And let's say that they win a ring in, let's say they win that Bucks ring. And then they turn around and they win that Warriors ring. They go back to back, right? Hmm. And then let's say right now that that crew, that crew is just demolished now. Or, you know, whatever, it's broken up. But you get two rings out of it. Would you guys take those two rings out of it? Or would you take right now the position that the Thunder are in? <laughs> that, that- Come on, I mean, women is rings. the most Would I take rings. two rings or 27 well, well, I think I think what he's saying is, is that's, that's the question. Would I take with two the, rings with what they're building? Or a bunch of draft picks. But what, no, no, what no, no, they're no. building I'm right now, there could be more than forward. two rings. Or yeah, it could be zero rings. Ring. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Slim, Slim, you said you said this is about to turn into more than two rings. No, I'm saying it could be. You're taking the the guarantee of like two with guys that are to like you know mid to late prime and then eventually going to be in their twilight years within the next five years right. or do you take the ultra hyper young core that the thunder have right now and and move forward with the question mark i mean rings winning nba championships is freaking hard so i think anytime you have an opportunity to do that you you take it the biggest thing in my brain that's keeping me from saying you you make the alternate uh universe take is we get robbed of that chris paul danilo gallinari shea gill just playoff series against the Rockets because that team was so fun and they just live in my brain rent free all the time the fact that like dilapidated Danilo was averaging 19 a game Chris Paul went there looked weird as hell in a Thunder uniform and and balled out and Shea Gill just was becoming Shea Gill just but I mean rings are rings I think we could I mean you never know Shea could be the guy that you know <clears throat> like a like a Charles Barkley that had an awesome career and just never won a ring um, and it's so much more about situation, timing, and all that jazz. But I don't know. I'm, if I'm a Thunder fan, I'm like, give me the rings, bro. Give me the the redemption crew of of bringing KD back, maybe holding on to Russ, and and in two chips is all I need. I'm a Mavs fan. I've been living off of 2011 for the past 13 years, so I'm I'm, I'm taking chips. I don't think that the, I don't think that Russ stays because I think it's now tricky. I think it gets real tricky with Russ now because. Russ isn't the Russ when he left. Remember who Russ is now. Russ is way different. Russ is the league MVP. He already was looking at KD at that time, like I'm better than this dude. I'm the I I should be the man on this team. So he, I think he was already looking at KD like that. So but now he, we, man, we compound we compound that with winning the league MVP, being the triple double machine that he is, and now you want to bring KD back, and now I have to play, I have to go back to a reduced role. When this dude is coming over here with the two championships, being an all-pro that he is, and being awesome, so now I got to go back to that reduced role? Plus, they butted heads. They butted heads. That. Yeah, after after he left and he was in Golden State. Right. 
So from, from a management perspective. George. No, he was the Russ, guy there. Paul George Russ, was. Russ sacrificed shot attempts for Paul George. No, he, he was still the no, shot he leading. No, he was a shot no, leading. He did. Oh, we're not Mars, about to Mars, okay, did, Mars, right. did you watch the playoffs against Utah? No, Paul, George I... couldn't, Paul George couldn't make a shot, so Russ started taking more shots. He took generally, all of them. Russ, generally Mars? speaking, and also I'm talking about more about 2019 than 2018. But generally speaking, Russell Westbrook was fine to let Paul George score when Paul George could make shots. But when Paul George is out there going four for 16, Russell Westbrook's going to take 50 million shots. That's Russell Westbrook. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Russell Westbrook's like, hey, you're not doing your job. I'm going to take matters into my own hands. But Russ took a back seat to Paul George and let him be Paul George. That's why Paul George had the best season of his career next to Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook right. is fine deferring to people. I think maybe he struggled with that earlier on in his career. Sure. Right. But he grew. He developed. I'm, I don't... I don't like when did he take so he took a back seat to Paul George the next year in 19. Not in general not, not, speaking, I think he took a back seat. I just think that playoff series against the Jazz, where everyone was playing terribly, Russ decided, hey, instead of me giving the ball to Paul George, hoping he'll figure it out. Everybody was playing terribly though. Up. Everybody Russell Westbrook took 93 shots in the last two games of the series. How is no anybody can, supposed to get no going? One can make because right, how, I'm how not saying it was a good decision. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying he. I'm not saying he made a good decision. I'm just saying I understand the thought process of hey, no one else is really doing anything. I'm, I'm gonna take some shots. No, all the shots, not some shots. I'm and gonna I'm, take all to the be shots. fair, it worked. It worked in one of the games they won, and I think, and I might be wrong because I'm. This series is what five, six years ago. Okay. The game they won, Paul George got up his fair amount of shots, and he, he scored. He scored a reasonable amount of points. He might have thirty yeah. in the game they won. The next game is the game where he was like four for 16. Like, what do you there want us to do? No, Just keep is, giving the ball to Paul George? You can't score? Mars, there is, no, there is no reason to take 93 shots in two games. In two games? There is no there is no explanation for I'm going to look this up. I'm going to see how many shots he actually took. I know he took 23s. I'll tell you right now. 23s, Mars. But 20. in his defense again, in his defense again. <laughs> there is no defense like, today. I know because None. once again, we're not box score watching. Like four of those no, came in the last 20 seconds when they were down four. Right. Like, so, were, in, so, so in his defense, he was like seven of 16. 16? Seven of 16 is not bad. I mean, you're right. If seven you think about it, seven of 16 bad, is not bad. But let me, let me. Okay, so game 45. six, game six, so Russell Westbrook was eight. Yeah, Russell Westbrook in game six was 43 shots. That's what he took. <laughs> and 19 threes. And I think it's it oh, getting them up, man. You're chucking. 43 shots shot. and 19 threes. Paul George was two for 16. How am I supposed to get going when this dude is shooting all the shots? <laughs> Both of those are terrible. Wow. Okay, anything we'll, anything we'll go, more we'll than 30 is so, in, so in many shots quarter, in an NBA game. Russ took seven shots and Paul George took six. Okay. So not too far apart. Then Paul George took three in the second quarter and then Russ took eight. So in the first half, it was 15 almost to triple. nine. That's almost so triple. While Paul Not George right there, Mars. Before George, you go any further. While Paul George is right two there, for Mars. nine, Russ is seven for 15. While Paul George, Paul George is George two ain't doing his job. So you took triple the shots that I took in the second quarter. Pretty much, yeah. How am I made supposed four to get going, you Mars? made none. Yeah. Right, because I only got two. Rhythm is you a thing. You took nine. You so gotta, you got to let guys. Wait, wait. He's got 28 shots in the second half? Um, in the sec in the second half, Russ was eleven for twenty eight. Yes. How am I supposed to get going, Ox? How? As now wait a minute, Mars. Also, once again, for what is worth, a lot of those rush shots came at the end of the fourth when they were. How many shots did Paul George shoot in the in the third quarter? In the third quarter, Paul George took two shots. Was two. That's it. Come on. Now, now, Mar, now that that could yeah, that could and be Russ a had a twenty point quarter on fifty percent shooting. Now, Mar, what happened to the hot hand? Now, 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 Mars, transfer Russell's that. Cooking. Transfer that. What was the score the game, in, in, in game seven? And then in the fourth quarter, Paul George was over five. Because I'm what was, two what was the score at halftime? That is the last game. That That's the last game of the series. The that's game, game six. It's not no, game seven. Yeah, game and then game five. And then game five, the game before right. where Russ took 39 shots. So what's 39 plus 43? That's 93. That's 82. 82. 82, 82, 82, shots. 82 shots. 82 shots, yes. Not 92. And in that game, Paul George himself took 26 shots. So Paul George, got some shots. Paul George got some shots up. And of those 26 shots much, he took, how, he took how many did he make and what did he finish with? He finished with 34. He was 12 or 26, and they won the game. 12 or 26. And they how won the we, game. How, and and how, about we, how about we go back to Paul George in game six and get going a little bit more? My yeah, point guard should yeah, not two be for 16 ain't going to... Right. Be, you know why two for 16? Because, one, I'm not getting the basketball. Number two, 
39 no shots. way you're sitting here backing up Paul George. I can't blame Russell Westbrook three. for Paul George missing shots. I can't do that. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. So, 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 what's the game? What's the game plan? I, I, game I plan? can. I can do what, that. What, what's the, bro, what's the I, game I plan? And what's the blame game Russell plan? Paul My question to you, Ron, is what's the game plan in game six? If I went 34 in game five and we won 12 for 16, because 12 for 16 is not the hottest game either. 12, 12 for 26? 12 for 26. 12 for 26. That's, That's almost 50 percent. That's almost 50 percent. Uh, that's almost you, 50. I mean, free throws, my you point guard shot the ball. He was, he was 8 of 10 from the free throw line. Yeah. Me, meanwhile, meanwhile, my point oh, guard man. shot the ball almost 40 times. And this is this is game game five or game six. That's game, game five. five that they won. Yes, game I five am rock they won. watching right now, but because it was six years ago, but I did watch the game. And I watched Russ <laughs> come down six straight trips and shoot the basketball. I did see that. How am I supposed to get involved if I'm Paul George, if Russell Westbrook, my lead guard, comes down six straight trips and shoots the basketball? What Chill. are we talking about here? How? I, 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 I get it. But also, too, Russell Westbrook is still Russell Westbrook at this moment. Yes, he is. Yes, he right? is. This, this is not Russell Westbrook when he's got on the Lakers crew. This is, this is still Russell Westbrook. So Russell he- Westbrook got caught blanche to do that. But at the it, same time, what? the responsibility of a point guard is, is, is to get your guys involved, especially a guy as good as freaking Paul George. There's no reason on any team, whether it's 10 years ago or now, that Paul George should be taking two shots in a quarter. Slim, I'm shoving the ball down your throat. Do that. <laughs> Pause. Oh, I'm focus, shoving Mars. the ball down focus, your throat. Mars. No, stay with me. Stay with focus, me. Focus, Mars. Stay with me. Stay with me. I know that's why. I'm going to be an but adult. We're here. Stay We're here. Stay We're here. here. We're I here. said pause, Mars. I'll pause it again. But stay with me. You shot 16 shots in May this many. Look, my son is pissed right now because he shot 16 shots in May this many, but I'm supposed to keep giving you the ball? Yeah. Yes. Oh, so what? Until you go yes. four, for, four for 32? Yes. Yes. All of us. Yes, right. So wait, 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 wait. You're wait, talking about Russell Westbrook. I, I, I don't understand. I, wait, I don't understand. So, so, because, so, because Russell West, so because Russell Westbrook's a point guard, it's his job to give the ball to his teammates no, no matter it's, how it's his because, ball, not because it's, this no, is, no, it, it's his it's his job to put his teammate in a situation to get himself going. Not just hey, here's the ball, it's your turn to, to ISO. It's like okay, well, even even being like, hey coach, we gotta get PG going. We got we got to have him coming off some sort of action here to get him a look because he's not playing well. I can't I can't come down the court and shoot the ball every single time. Six I straight trips. Six yeah. straight trips. Especially if you wrong, Russell Westbrook can do that because it's Russell, Russell Westbrook. Westbrook. My my thing my thing is for Russ. If if uh, our coach, if I'm coach and I got Russ here and PG here, if somebody's gonna if somebody got to shoot forty three shots, it's not gonna be you, Russ. That's that's my thing. I don't want no, I don't want anybody shooting forty three shots. But if somebody's gonna do it, I got PG. I got Russ. PG's gonna do it. That's what I'm saying. Good. And Russ and Russ, but Russ should know this already. Like, and then on top of that, chart, y'all see this was just the start of something. Because when Russ got down there with James Harden in Houston, it was more of this. Him and James, him and James Harden doing straight tour dates together. <laughs> together. Yeah, that was that was a game that was just, James Harden had like fifty and shot like twenty percent from the field or something. And Russ had a oh, that, it was. I can't. I could find the box. Remember the game? It was disgusting. Isn't that I think the I remember Russ, that I think Russ had a triple double, but he shot. He shot like three for twenty one. It was Russ crazy. had a Russ had an inefficient triple double. James Harden had like fifty on terrible shooting, but got his free throws. It's like I could find the box score for the game. It is. It's. That was embarrassing. That was embarrassing. So, yeah, so, so with that, yeah, being I think said, after Russ, that game, he was like, "We sucked, but we won." And like the the encore post game interview, I remember that, John. So now we want to add. So now we want to add Kevin Durant to this Russell Westbrook mix. That's what we want to do. We want to add Kevin Durant to this Russell Westbrook mix, who's now the league MVP. He's been a triple double machine. Who is now the man who already thinks that he's better than Kevin Durant as it is. Who already thinks that. And you saw what he did in the playoffs. So now we want to add Kevin Durant back to this. How does this go over between those two guys? It doesn't. I think you've got to put faith. They had good chemistry together. Like we're yeah, but they they were they did not like, like each like, other. Like, Russ got scapegoated so bad in this whole situation. Do we forget? Facts. We we forget. We forget. Russ had multiple ten assist seasons next to Kevin Durant. Russ yeah, had multiple he seasons. He had multiple seasons where he took the backseat to Kevin Durant, contrary to popular belief, because he would shoot yes. shots that people would thought was erratic. Don't forget the season Kevin Durant got injured. Russell Westbrook led the league in scoring. Oh, we all forget that. He, he, was, he led the league in scoring at 28. 
Kevin Durant comes back. Russell Westbrook takes four less shots a game, and he goes from averaging 28 leading the league in scoring to averaging 23. What is that doing? What does that that's say? A, I about mean, that's us? that's not that's not really taking a that's not really taking a step back when Kevin Durant shows up and then you shoot a couple less shots. That's what's going to happen when you have another when you got a superstar scorer on your team. That doesn't mean I'm taking a step back. That just means I didn't get the ball that time because right. KD had it. <laughs> like the, right. that so doesn't the fact, that so, so, so the fact so, so the fact there's there's no way we're blaming. Are we trying to blame Russell Westbrook for why KD left? Is that what we're trying to? No. Blame? No, no, that's no, not what no, I was no. doing, but I can. No. We can we can go that route. <laughs> I, I think <laughs> like if if you were to bring him back into that mix, um, because I think we see like what happened with Russ now, and and also what's happening with James Harden is that they're entering that that stage of their career where winning is truly the most important thing to them. It's less about ego. It's less about am I going to get my numbers because those guys are really their their NBA awards days are are over with, but. You're saying can they can they go through that metamorphosis together in OKC like him and Russ and KD and I think if you're an organization you have to take the chance because it's it's Kevin Durant it's right. possibly the greatest NBA scorer of all time right. um, but I think there's a big chance that it blows up in your face or in your face you just That's have to be I'm okay thinking. with it. That's what I'm thinking because can KD and Russ get past their differences. And to Ron's point, I mean, the fact that Russell Westbrook that next year, he leads the league in scoring, right? So wouldn't that compound how Russ really feels? Like, I don't need this dude. What is he here for? And then yeah. to Mars's point, when you talk about, well, we'll pack Russ up. Well, we could have packed Russ up two years ago then. Then what did I leave for in the first place? Why am I here? Why did I come back here to pack him up? Because the crew that I was on back then was probably the best opportunity that we had to win it. So now I'm going to come back and I'm going to pack him up now when he's done all of this and management is going to be okay with that when he stayed and I'm the one who left. I don't think KD would ask for us to be back to because I don't, I don't know where the idea that they didn't like each other came from. Right. I, there was never, until KD left, there was nothing to be said about they didn't get along with each other. There was, it was the opposite. It was, they were best friends. That's what it was. I mean, I could point to KD's MVP speech, but I don't really want to do that. But like, there was nothing, there was no even slight rumors or inclinations that they were anything less than good friends when they played together. And then, I mean, KD said on his own burner account, it had nothing to do with Russ. It was the fact that what was around them was a lack of shooting and skill. Right. And it was just a bunch of athletes who couldn't really do much. That was his problem with OKC, not, um, Billy Donovan wasn't great in his opinion. So it had nothing to do with Russ. He's KD said that himself while pretending to not be himself. I think burner KD is the truest form of KD you can find. So I think KD said himself he had no problem with Russ. So I don't I don't know why we're reaching to say it was Russ. It was anything to do with Russ. I think he loved playing with Russ. So I don't think he would ask for Russ to be gone because Russ is what the second best point guard he's played with. Best depends on who you talk to. Well, yeah, maybe. So, yeah. Shout out to Russ, man. Underrated. But I found the game where K James Harden had 50 and Russ had the triple double. <laughs> it was a game against it was a game against the Spurs. They actually lost the game. 133 to 135. <laughs> James Harden had 50 points on 11 of 37 shooting. Garbage. <laughs> wait, wait. And 4 for 20 from 3. Garbage. But had his 24 oh. but had 24 free throws, 24 or 24. And then Russell Westbrook had his 19. 24? <laughs> yeah, 24 or 24. Russell Westbrook had 19 points, 10 rebounds, and 10 assists with five turnovers while going seven of 30 from the field. Yikes. Yo, that is the. Bro, I want to throw something right now. To Russell Westbrook <laughs> James Harden do it. I want to throw something right now. <laughs> Both of them Terrible. at their worst, it's the epitome of it right there. Now, oh. obviously, at their best, 2K statistics, bro. Hey man, I don't know what to say. Bro, that's, 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 that's just, that just pissed me off, all, that's that's me all over again. I remember when that happened. 30? You hate 18 of 67 combats? I had everything seven about for, that. I had everything seven about for 30? That. That's what we doing, Mars? Seven, seven for 30. 30. One for six from three, which means he went six of 24 on twos. My God. Yeah, 19. Yes. He fouled out. He, he, shot 30, he shot 30 shots at 19 points? Yeah. <laughs> Brax, that is indeed the most unethical game of all before. time. I might actually, I might actually watch that game tonight just to. Get yeah, Russell. they should have. They for real should have been kicked out the league that night. Like now, Russell, Westbrook, uh, Russell Westbrook, Westbrook fired out in that game too. They By the way, they just they disrespected the game that night. That was the most disrespectful thing I've seen ever. Damn. Shout out to Lonnie Walker coming off the bench and having twenty eight in that game. 
For the Spurs? Somebody yeah, had yeah, to yeah. score. Hey, yeah, shout out to him. I mean, Lonnie Walker seems to have won the whole game. He played all the way. Who else was cool. on that Spurs team? What, what, uh, what that's era DeMar of Spurs DeMar 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 was that? DeMar DeMar was 9 for 25 in that game himself. Bryn Forbes had a nice little 10 or 13 performance with 25 points. The Gatlin Derek White, Jakob Pertl, Rudy Gay. Patty Mills, Trey Lyles, oh, really? Dejon, Dejounte Murray. Um, I think this is post ACL tear, but off the bench, Damari Carroll, Drew Eubanks, Damari Carroll. Haven't heard that name in a long time. You know, on the Lakers coaching stuff. But yeah, there we go. Shout out to like, I'm gonna watch this game tonight. I'm gonna watch this game tonight. All right, y'all. This is a good time to tell everybody in the crowd to go ahead and slap that like button. Appreciate everybody that's tapped in right now. Um, we love you guys more than words can express. Uh, shout out everybody in the comment section. Y'all really holding it down as always. If you haven't got a chance to go tap into www.pcplayerschoicemerch.com. Go check it out. It's right there in the bottom right corner. Also, today on Playback, we got a new crew on Playback with a new scheme and a new show. They'll be pushing agendas. It's actually called Pushing Agendas. Mm. And you know who is the head of this whole agenda pushing crew. None other than Dub. It, it wouldn't be a pushing agendas type of type of show without Dub. So it's gonna be Dub Seven, a couple other guys. You guys make sure to go check it out and check out what agendas they'll actually be pushing. I have no clue what it's gonna be, but I know it's gonna be nasty and entertaining. So y'all be sure to tap in. That actually comes on at right after this. Sad. Uh, yeah, right after this. So go go check that out. Um, we got a couple super chats as well. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Sean Kane wants to know, is that Ted Lasso? <laughs> it's me no, in Sean. the flash. <laughs> Sean, see I've got Ted, Ted Lasso, Lasso uh, Commissioner Gordon before. Uh, yeah, it's the only facial hair I can grow out well, just right here for whatever I'm reason. Sorry. I'm out the loop. Who is Ted Lasso? So it's it's a, show, right? About football. Yeah, TV show character. You Google Real him. Quick. He just got a big mustache. That's it. Right. Right. RJ the God said, if KD never left OKC, would he eventually have won a chip with them? What do you guys think? Very, very possible. Very possible. I mean, it depends on what happens around the league. I don't know. Yeah, I see. Warriors, see yeah. The Warriors could have afforded to sign any max contract level player. So I'm just going on them and say yes. Yeah. I think I mean, it's they possible. came close a few times. Yeah, I think it's possible. <clears throat> Drip Bayless said, if KD never went to Golden State and won, goes to Brooklyn and Phoenix and doesn't win, is there any argument for Russ being greater than KD? Hmm. No. No, because he's not as good at basketball. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. I mean, I think, I think, I think KD's – the great personal opinion, subjective, whatever. I think he's the best scorer of all time. Mm -hmm. Just ability to put the ball in the bucket in a variety of ways. I don't think you could say Russ is the greatest anything. Maybe he had one of the greatest seasons of all time, but the greatest rebounds in guard of all time. Yeah, I mean, I, there's there's too many guys. I don't think he's a better rebounder than, than Oscar Robinson, but that's just me. But with that being said, Oscar Robinson, okay. Now, Mars, if I'm not mistaken, I know how you feel about being better at basketball. What is Russell Westbrook better at in terms of a basketball player than Kevin Durant? Oh, oh, um, okay. He's a better playmaker than KD, like tenfold. Like he's way better than KD at playmaking. He creates for his teammates at a rate I don't think I've ever seen. So playmaking, I think he's better. Um, I mean, he's a better bull handler than KD, but I mean. That's by virtue of being much smaller. And I wouldn't call Russ a great ball handler himself, but he's better than KD. At it. Um, and he's a better rebounder than KD is, for sure. Um, yes. I'll say I'll say he's better in transition. But KD, like before the Achilles tear, was a monster in transition himself. So I will say, I will say Russ is better in transition, but KD. Filling the lanes in transition or going coast to coast himself, pretty good. But so, so playmaker, he's about and, and, tra and that transition jumper too, right? Um, yeah, yeah, he, the transition like KD in transition up. was. Who's transition? Who, who's transition jumper? KD or Russ's transition jump shot? KD. KD. Okay. KD. Okay. Russ had his Russ had his little elbow pull up that he could get to, but yeah, he, 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 got that, he got that pull up. He do. But so passing, playmaking, rebounding, 
and he's a better transition player. And I'll say he's a better ball handler. But KD is still the substantially better player because. Well, I mean, would you say you you boring. say definitively he's a better ball handler? Because I would define how good a ball handler someone is by their ability to create their own shot or mm-hmm. create an advantage with the defense. I'm not talking about cone work because we're talking right. about cone work. Then you bring in a whole other list of things. But in real yeah. basketball situations, I mean, I wouldn't say it's like oh, Russ is here and, and KD's here. Like it's not even close. Right. Um, I think they're both good at you know creating separation, getting downhill based off of their their handle, but. I don't know. There's too many things that are too close there for me to say that Russ is just definitively better. So yeah, Moss, even even with Russ dribbles in a crowd way better than KD is because he's closer to the ground. But KD one on one in terms of a ball handler being able to create, he don't really create separation crazy, but he can. So KD well, being KD, able to create separation one on one, yeah, he didn't but, need to dribble in a crowd. Like once he gets into a crowd, he's high pickup, and if he's in a crowd, he's probably close to the rim, and he's just finishing. But yeah, gets, even he, even he, he, loses, he, loses, he loses the ball a lot because if you can, if but you with can that, surprise with that him with a Martin. double team, he's cooked. If he's I mean, if he's going if the the ball handling thing too, it's not even like 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 how Slim said with the with the cone work. To me, it's like you're not taking the ball from KD really, um, and you can't oh, you I can't hard, yeah. I, you, I mean, you're not you're not stopping him from getting to a spot. That's how I look at ball handling. Like I don't care if you like Kyrie with the ball. If you're not going to take the ball from me and you can't stop me from getting to my spot with the ball, then my ball handling is more than sufficient, especially for somebody like KD that can just pull up over anybody once he gets to his spot. So that's why I look at like it's sufficient, but he he gets ripped a lot. Like, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe what about maybe watching highlights? So, so, I don't know. KD gets ripped. So from, so, from everything that you just told me, Mars, on the offensive side of the basketball, it sounds to me like the only thing that KD does better than Russ is put the ball in the bucket. So, how about we get on the other side of the basketball? Hold up, though. He, he, he shoots. Well, yeah, if he you want to than... just say, like, he's a better scorer, like, I mean, that's Bathurst, the score, and that was right. Like KD is he, he, he's got a better mid range game than Russ, 100%. I, I, I'll definitely. A million shoot. folds. He's a better he, three. He's just a better million like, scorer. He's, he's, he's so, long ball he's so than much better than Russ, the score. It's not cool. It's not cool. Makes a I don't think it's huge, close. huge difference. Yeah, I don't think I, I don't he can think it's play close. without the ball so much better than Russell Westbrook can. The fact that he's able to be effective without the ball, whereas well, Russell Westbrook guard. for large portions of his career looked. Mm-hmm. I'm a league guard, though. Better word, bad ball. without the basketball in his hands. I mean, well, you've like, played off the basketball, but but you but you've played off the basketball your whole career as a small forward. I'm a league guard. I play with the basketball. That's been my job. My, my my career yeah, in but the then you play with other people who need the ball you look a lot less effective which is why KD is able to fit in so many different situations and Russell Westbrook when he goes to the Lakers we all knew instantly the moment he went to the Lakers hey this ain't gonna work you know why it's not gonna work because you know Russell Westbrook needs the ball but guess what you play with someone else who needs the ball and who's better with the ball than you now all of a sudden you don't look effective and right. I don't use that to hold it against Russ and be like hey Russ yeah you you are bad because of the Lakers no I think Russ is a good player but right. because he doesn't fit in as many situations as KD can fit in because of the fact that his game just fails to blend with some of the better players is why he's not as good. Because I think we would mostly agree, Russell Westbrook, if Russell Westbrook's your best decision maker, maybe you're not, maybe that's not ideal. No. So you probably need someone who's a better decision maker than Russ. Right. Which means you have to have the ball out of Russ's hands. And then Russ isn't as effective. So yeah, that's why it's like, that that's point. why Russ isn't as good as Kevin Durant is. But Russ is an all-time. I hate the people who are, Russ is a top ten point guard of all time. Uh, I have a hard time agreeing with anyone who could say he's like uh, barely, barely top ten. Like, come on. And he's one of the best point. He's the second best point guard of the last ten years, in my opinion, because I think Chris Paul was kind of coming to the tail end. So he's the second best point guard of the last ten years. Steph? So I think it was well, Steph's one, and then Russ Steph's is two. One. I thought it was Dame, but that's just me. Keep yeah, going. Russ is better than Dame. In my opinion, yeah. Another thing that we're I leaving off the table. Are we a point guard? No, come on, Bob. Please, no. please. So I hear the Kyrie. I, I might. I, mean, I might be willing to hear the Kyrie argument before I hear the Dame argument. Yeah, same. <clears throat> I'm telling uh, you. Actually, you know I'm, what? Because uh, why? Why? No, why is that's, Russell that's Westbrook? Re- that's recency bias. I'll, I'll, that's recency bias. That's recency. Why is Russell Westbrook clearing Dame? He's not. Why is he clearing? I say. Be, he, was, uh, he was okay, a, so why, a better that. point guard. Why is he better than Dame? Oh, and Russ does because, everything because better he does, than yeah, Dame. He does everything. I shoot the three. He's a utility shoot, player. No, no, he does not score better and, than Dame. And, and, and shoot the mid-range, too. No, he does not score better than Dame. He barely does anything better than Dame. 
Okay. Besides shoot the mid range and shoot the three, rebound, he's, 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 he's substantially better, better defender. But Russ wasn't much to write home about defensively. Right. Right. But he's just the best looking. At, you're just the best looking at the ugly chicks. That's all. But he was he was just running the around off the red. He just looked energetic. The transit play, like the more I think, okay, maybe maybe they might be better. Russ not, Russ not really, Russ not really Omar, making stick in Russ. Let's 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 get back because because what I'm doing about, the last ten years that means I'm factoring in like the last four years of Russ too. That we, we huh? can't just we, we can't just leave right. out. And if I if you're if you're telling me like 2014 to like 2020, right? Sure, but oh, the I last four just years of like Russ are also in the last four right. years. No, last ten years. The last okay, so so yeah, so, uh, also in the last ten years, and that's like nearly half of the time, and he hasn't <coughs> been great in the last four years. So we're talking yeah. about so we're so we're okay. talking about a bucket. So we're talking about a bucket getter. I think Russ is better in transition, and I think Russ might. I think Russ is a little bit better at the rim and finishing over mm -hmm. big guys. I'll, I'll give you that, Moss. I think that Dame's stop and pop game is better. I think Dame's sure. long ball is. I think his long ball is better. Sure. Now when we talk. Now when we're talking about a scorer. I mean, I've seen Dame, and and we're talking about a distributor. I've seen Dame seven eight seven eight dimes a game i've seen him do that i've seen him get into the teeth of the defense and get off the basketball when necessary because his decision making is better than russ's not only that i've seen him do it in more crucial times than russ has done it i've seen russ in boston throw the ball in the second row when when we're in the meat and potatoes of the game as opposed to damian lillard who i'd much rather have him shooting than passing the ball as opposed to russ with all of that being said i'm thinking about what these two guys do the best what does Russ do at what does Russ do the best? Russ is probably the best at what? Scoring? The best what his best attribute? His, what, what, what is Russ's best attribute? Playmaking. Okay, so his best play. So and when we and again, Mars, I think you and I are on the same page about playmaking. Playmaking doesn't just, just mean that you're a passer. Playmaking mm -hmm. means a whole bunch of other things, getting to the basket, passing the basketball, being having the gravity. Yeah. Right. I I, mm -hmm. I I can definitely get with that logic. But when I think about what Damian Lillard's best attribute is and what it contributes to them winning. I think that after Steph Curry, I think he's the second best point guard of this generation. Okay, because when I said it, for some reason I blanked out like what Russ looked it like happens. in Washington. It happens. He didn't have a terror. He wasn't awful in Washington. He, no, he, he wasn't. But terrible. he averaged a triple yeah, double. I mean, yeah, shout out to the triple double, but that's why I say the bot score is deceiving. But I mean, that's fair. So I want to. I want to say That's when I when I made that claim, I was thinking of like 2010s, Russ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought so we were comparing. I guess, pies. I guess in order to amend the claim, I think in the 2010s, but then I would have Chris Paul over Russ. So I think Russ is the third best point guard of the 2010s. That's what. That's why I'm going to amend the statement. I think in the 2010s, Russ was better than Dame. Now, when you start factoring in the last four seasons that happened in the 2010 2020s, sure, over the last 10 years from 24 to what would that be, 14. I guess maybe I'd probably take Dame. But 2010s, I would take Russ over Dame. And, that, and, and that's, that's when, so 2014 to now, I mean, Dame showed up in what, 2011? He showed up with Irv, didn't he? How many years? Let me count 10 seasons. One, he showed up a year two, after. Three, so he, he showed remember up yes, both, they both got rookie remember, year. Remember. So yeah. 11, okay, so he showed up. So the last 10 11, seasons so. is the 14 15 season to now. Yep. In that time frame, that. I'm willing to, I'd, I'd be willing to say Dame. That's when he was becoming Dame. Yeah. Now, that, from that time frame, I'd be willing to say Dame. Although I do still think it's a conversation. I'm not saying it's just clearly Dame. Right. But in the 2010s, I'm taking Russ. But I think the, clear at their best, who's the better player? Like, that's what I'm peak trying version to get of to. Russ. <laughs> yeah, peak like, version of Russ, peak the version time of Dame. Frames. Who is yeah, who's better? the better player? And, and I want to do a start bench cut at Dame. their prime. Russ, CP, and Dame. I'm benching Dame. Probably starting Wait, Russ, CP. CP and Dame. Is that what you said? Cut, sorry, yeah. cutting. I'm cutting Dame in that list. If we're talking primes, I, I'm because I, I like to think of obviously Dame is is a specialist in in when you compare him to those other guys. Those CP and Russell are are point guards, true point guards. I mean, Russ right. is obviously a bit more of a scoring aggressive guard who's you know trying to get his, and in the meantime, his gravity is going to make guys key in on him, and he's going to make those plays to get his other guys involved. Chris Paul is a pure point guard. Dame, I mean, think about it. If Dame wasn't, what is he, 6'2", 6 6'3", 6 if he wasn't yeah. that high, if he had two more inches, he'd be a shooting guard. He not, he's, he's not really a true one. You can pass. Yeah, exactly. He's a guard. He's a league I mean, guard. That applies to and a his, lot not, today's point guard. Right. Dame right. is hunting his Almost shot as, as a player, for sure. He's, he's hunting his shot, I mean, I would say more so than even Russ when they were both at their prime of being aggressive. I don't know if Dame is – 
is out of that yet. This is a weird transition year for him, but either way, I mean, if, if I'm picking guys for my team and that's what I assume a, a start bench cut is for whenever I hear it, it's like for my team, in my opinion, I'm taking the guy that can do more for my team, especially at the point guard position. If I want any guy to be able to do a lot of different things on my team, I want it to be the point guard because he's going to have his, the ball in his hands more, but, but, don't, but, but wouldn't, but wouldn't decision making factor into that? Because again, totally. as good as good as a point guard as as Russ was, one of the main reasons why I fell out of love with Russ is because I realized that he wasn't that smart, and that's what screwed me up with Russ. And yeah, I realized situationally that, for sure, right? And that's what screwed me up with him. So when I think about a guy in Dame, who I'll accept Dame shooting the basketball because he's a little bit more efficient, as opposed to a guy that I'm not sure that when we get into the meat and potatoes of the game, the guy that I trust with the basketball the most, who is my lead guard, is going to do something dumb and is going to screw us up. That that makes me think of uh, something this, this college coach said one time. He said he was looking at recruiting a guy that was really good, but a little bit of like a, a hothead, bad shot taker. And he said, and his college coach, so he's talking about uh, also getting recruited by other teams in their same conference. He said, would I rather – have this guy beat me twice a year or have him beat me eight to mm -hmm. 10 times a year? Because if he's on my team, he might beat us just by being an idiot eight to 10 times a year, or he's going to be on another team and look lights out when they play us the two times a year, because I didn't want to take him, you know? Right. So it's that, I, that there's definitely something. That's, to the that, that, that's the thing that I'm thinking about when it comes to Russ, it's not his ability. I mean, Russ is dunking over seven footers. Russ could pass with the best of them. I've always felt like with Russ, when we get late in games, he's my quarterback. How do I feel about my quarterback when we're in a quarterback, when we're down a score with five minutes? Is he going to throw a pick six? Russ is more likely to throw a pick six. Dame, Dame is the, is the, the, you know, the seven at the bar, you know, very kind of plain looking, but you know what you're getting. Yeah. Russ is the nine and a half. No, she's going to ruin your life type girl, but you're like, hey, get away from me. Get our way. Go. Get get our way. No, Yo, I don't want nothing to do with it. No. <laughs> you said nine and a half ruin your life type? She's beautiful yeah. though, Ron. When you what look at her, you like, God damn, she's fine. But the minute one more she gonna be at tonight, so I can put it in my GPS and say, No, set no, Ron. I'm telling you, Ron, you're gonna come home. Your your furniture's gonna be flipped over, dishes <laughs> broken. She's got hey, she's got she no. got the tapestry behind her headboard. You know what I'm talking no. about? The get out. Hmm. You walk in, you no. see that that big tie dye tap. Run. Run. On, on top of that, on top of that, Ron, she has terrible credit. <laughs> oh my God, Ron! Run, get out of here! Damn it, run, oh, run! Man. Yeah, so is everyone starting Chris Paul except Ron? Because I know Ron not starting Chris Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not a not a prayer. Okay. Well, let's let, let's let's go <laughs> yeah. around the room. So, Slim, can I get your uh your star bench cut one more time? I, I'm I'm sticking I'm sticking to my guns here. I hear your argument, chill, but I'm I'm sticking to I'm a start CP bench Russ cut Dane. I'm I'm going with the firecracker. All right, Mars. Um, <laughs> it's not as simple as it looks. It's no, not because I'm trying to think like at the absolute best. Yes. Now, what what year? When you think about Russ, we're talking about 2010s, right? When was Russ? I'm talking about the best version. Whatever years What's they the made. What's the Ryan. best version of Russell Westbrook, Mars? Is it is it the MVP Russell Westbrook? Was it like 15 20, Russell Westbrook? 2017, like that. So, so 15 to 17. That's that's the best Russell Westbrook. All right, but hey, that MVP year. Could I make could I make the case that? That Russ was better than Chris Paul's. What 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 kind of team? I mean, I'm, maybe I'm getting looking too deep into it, but it like it kind of depends on what you have. If I have a roster with not a lot of ball dominant players, yeah, I'm taking Russ. But if I have another alpha on the team, like yeah, sure, I'll, I might move Dame above him in that aspect. Yo, Slim, I'll go, I'll go Chris Paul, I'll go Chris Paul, Russ, I'll go Chris Paul, Russ, and Dame. I'll go, I'll go Chris Paul, Russ, and Dame. But Dame is like, respectfully, he's pretty far lost for me in this conversation. But Chris Paul and Russ is like, I could change my mind easily. I think Chris All Paul right. was the. I, I said, I said, Dame was the was the second best point guard of the generation. I think Chris Paul was the best pure point guard. So I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with Chris Paul at the lead guard. And I'm flipping uh, Russ and Dame. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna bench Dame and I'm gonna cut Russ. What you got, Ox? Mm. Since we're talking about the 2010s right there, I'm gonna start right John Rondo. No, we we here we go. Remember what happened yesterday. Oh, We're not doing this again. Uh, starting this again. Uh, don't start I'm, it I'm again. Starting right now. Rondo. Don't start it. All right, all right. Chill, chill, chill. Okay. Uh, if I have to, okay. If I have to, I uh, start Chris Paul. I think I'm a. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and bench Russ. I'm gonna bench Russ and, and cut down. I think so. Hey y'all! I really, I I really want to play right on forty eight minutes. Start your time. What's crazy to say that um a starting Russell Westbrook or b cutting Chris Paul? Cutting Chris Paul is crazy. By yes. far, that's 100%. insane. That's because I, I I I think Damon Kyrie is a closer conversation than Damon Russell Chris Paul. I think Ky, like that's a Kyrie man. He underrated. In my opinion, but current Chris Poole is just hate. I'm no, gonna... yeah, well, we're not doing that. No, we're not. But I know you hate him, so I mean, well, <laughs> I'm a hater. Chris Paul out of here. Damn, <laughs> <off the bench. laughs> I'm saying, though, Ron, can we can't we start raising on bench? Kyrie? No, we can't. No, we okay, can't. We, we, no, can, we can start. No, we can start raising. We can start raising on no, the bench. Grievous, no, Vasquez. No, we can't. Let me no, let me bench. Let me no, let me bench. Grievous. Oh, send this dude to hell. We had to deal with the King and Murray logic yesterday. You saw what happened. Let me bench, let me bench Creep Grievous. Here we go again. Now, Grievous, that's just what's up. I have that let me, let me, let me play Grievous. Hey, let me was, play Grievous. The Orleans fans hate that man. I got Vasquez. Was Grievous Vasquez better than Tyler Hero? <laughs> All I know, Chit Town, is I'm, pl I'm playing yeah, Grievous 12 minutes and Ray John 36. The mother dudes can get out of here. <laughs> but hold on, Slim. Grievous why getting do, 12 minutes. Uh, why, why, do, why do New Orleans fans hate Grievous Vasquez? Hey, I just, I, I live down here. I live uh, in, in like Southern Alabama, um, and I got a lot of buddies in New Orleans, and they, they hate that man. They just, I mean, they hate him. They hate Solomon Hill. They hate Solomon Hill more than anyone, bro. <laughs> mm. Don't talk to a Pelicans I fan know, about uh, Solomon Hill. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Mr. Cardio, but uh, but yeah, all I know is that every Pelicans fan I ever talked to be like, oh yeah, I remember playing with like Grievous Vasquez in 2K12, and they're like, don't say his name. It's like Voldemort, bro. Don't don't talk about him. <laughs> all right, so I got a couple more super chats, and we're gonna go ahead and get into these power rankings. Uh, it's no better time than now. But Satoru said Kyrie is better than Dame in every way besides playmaking. He even shoots better from three. Kyrie has become extremely underrated. He's not a bad three point shooter than that. He is not. I don't know where you get that from. No, he is it's not. The, it's the percentages. It's because of the percentages. That's just because of the percentages. Yeah, sure. box percentages. We're talking about, I mean, Dame we're talking is... about box score. No, he's better off yeah. the bounce than Kyrie Irving. Yes, he's better in transition than Kyrie Irving at the long ball line. One hundred percent. He's not a better three point shooter than well, Damian. I think, I, I, think that might, I think that might be the only thing he's better at Kyrie than is that three ball. Other than that, I got Kyrie in everything. That, that was a, that's cool. that's that's a quick statement. I'm not trying, you know, going into Kyrie a better Kyrie Kyrie, Kyrie, Kyrie a better score than that. Kyrie yes. better score. Oh today. yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I think I think he better. I, think, I, think, I, I will say I think Kyrie's a better shooter. Than better three him. level scorer. But just than, three than now. But that's a shooter in general. I think Kyrie's a better shooter. I'll, I'll, I'll take Kyrie in he every nice aspect of the game mark. except for that three ball. He ain't Kyrie. Dame was not. Dame was not going to in the mid range. He was nice in the mid range. You can he stand on Kyrie's him. feet, Kyrie. You can step on Kyrie's feet, and he's still getting that shot off. It's mm. more than likely going in. He's he got that touch. Kyrie, so nice nice with the in, ter in terms of like production, oh. Dame would be like considered the better scorer because like he gets to the free throw line, which matters. Which yeah, matters. so like he, he gonna get to the free throw line. He gonna get like nine free throws, ninety percent, all the efficiency, blah blah blah. Right. But you need a bucket. I mean, you go into Kyrie. I don't know what to tell you. He nicer with the pill than Dame, and I don't think that's a question. <laughs> I, I, I got yeah, a question. He nicer with the pill than Dame. Yeah, I got a that, question. That's kind of that's one thing about Dame, though. Right, right, right quick, Slim. Dame don't yeah, play okay. with the ball. Dame he take one, two, three dribbles, and he, he get he right to shot it. Him. He's a, yeah. he's efficient with his movement for sure. Like Kyrie likes yeah, to play. You know, I like Kyrie just be standing there twelve dribble. Like he, if he if he, he got big on the he, island, he's gonna beat him in like three dribbles. It's just it, it just it's just it's just different. He effective. He effective. Like. Yeah, it's not it's not necessarily better or worse. It's just different. But I I, I got a question. It's, like I said, it's kind of a pivot. But do you think Kyrie right now is the best Robin to a Batman in the NBA? Because the way I see it is well, right two? now. 
Yeah. The best, the best number two in, in, in the league. The right best now. number two option in the league right now. Devin Booker, I mean, look, Jalen Brown, yeah, it's, it's Ky- LeBron it's Kyrie, James. Is Kyrie better than Devin Booker? That's the, oh, that's the a good – that's a, that's the only – I mean, I'd say that's the only one I'd put up there just because of the way – and I'm not talking about just how good of a player they are, but I'm talking about how effective they are truly as a second option because mm-hmm. being a second option as a bona fide superstar is really difficult because – Obviously, understanding when to be like, okay, it's my turn. I, I'm out here without the superstar out there, and being able to switch, like, shift gears from go mode to like tertiary, secondary mode is is really tough. But I think he mm-hmm. strikes that balance perfectly in Dallas. Just, and I think it's turn it on. What, that, that, what, that do what do you do with the Lakers? Who's who's the number two over there? Run. Number so, two, Kyrie Bad and Run. No. So unfortunate, Kyrie. But either way, my I guess my point is like the reason it worked so well in in uh in Cleveland is because Braun was there. And then you look at the way Luca plays too offensively, obviously different paces and different looking highlights, but essentially what they're trying to do is the same. They're trying to like penetrate inside, look yeah. to score or or create yeah. out of that. Um and, and Kyrie is at the end of the day a career like 40% three point shooter mm-hmm. and like as a guy that doesn't have to create for himself, when at, when Luca is on the floor, catching and driving closeouts is is just cheese. Like, yeah, he, he's he's fine. So I'm just that's what I'm thinking. Like Devin Booker, you might say he's a better player right now, but is he a better second option? Because D Book needs volume. We've seen what happens if D Book doesn't get volume, if he doesn't get like shot attempts. What about it, what about Jamal? How y'all feel about Jamal? He no better than Kyrie. No, I don't think. I mean, just just, uh, just testing the temperature. But in terms yeah. of compliment, I like Jamal. Though. In terms of how Jamal Murray compliments Jokic, I think Jamal Murray compliments Jokic more than Kyrie compliments Luca. But mm-hmm. Kyrie is the superior player in my. Well, opinion. they're both guards. So, so it's, but, but, it's but, a guard but, big but, versus a guard. Yeah, it sounds yeah, like so but, I think but, it's a better but, fitting duo. But well, that's what Kyrie's I'm talking talking about, Mars. Because it sounds like we're talking about two different things. We're not talking about Kyrie Irving being a better player than Jamal Murray. We're talking about a second option. And how a guy mm-hmm. compliments another guy. So if Jamal Murray, yeah, Jamal Murray, just, but Joker, Jamal, Kyrie would compliment Jokic better than Jamal Murray. Would he though? I mean, I don't get me wrong. I, I I think that he would compliment him, but better than Jamal Murray. The mm-hmm. way that those two guys work off of each other. I I, I think so. Because uh, again, Ron, I mean, again, Mars, again, Mars, I want I want to what what I want to make sure I want to make sure that we're clear. Just because you're a better player does not necessarily mean that you're going to compliment a guy the same. Now, well, yeah, I don't think about, Russell Westbrook would compliment your kitch. But, right, you know. so I'm talking about. So when I when I when I think about Jamal Murray, the tough shot maker that he is, Kyrie, Kyrie Irving is also Kyrie's a better Kyrie, tough shot maker. Right, Kyrie Irving is also a great tough shot maker. When I think about a ball handler, Kyrie Irving is a better ball handler. However, the offense runs through Joker. With the offense running through Joker, that means that a lot of other things are going on with Kyrie Irving, getting off the peel, playing off of Joker. Would he be able to play off of Joker as well as Jamal Murray yes. plays off of him? I think so. I think so. Yeah. The that only concern, with Ky- the only concern with Kyrie would be health, but Jamal Murray has the same health concerns. Right. So, so it's ACL. So, so I'm, yeah. Ky- Kyrie next to Jokic would be a cheat code. I don't, I don't know what to say. He can come off dribble handoffs. He can come off screens. They run a, they run a lot of off ball right. action with Kyrie because Kyrie's comfortable coming off screens and then flowing right. that into a, into a pick and roll, whatever the case right. may be. Kyrie's a better passer than Jamal Murray is, in my humble estimation. Um, and he's a better shot maker than Jamal Murray. And in terms of catch and shoot spot up, I think he's better than Jamal Murray. Neither of them really get to the free throw line for real. That's my only issue with Kyrie is that he's so good at avoiding contact that he doesn't get to the free throw line. He he should, for the amount of ability he has to get to the rim, with Jamal he'd Murray, be, he'd benefit he's, from getting he's, to the free he's throw too line. ethical for you, Mars. I see when we're talking about ethical oh, buckets, <laughs> Kyrie number one, but when we're talking about effectiveness, Kyrie could benefit <laughs> from getting to the line more. Yo, first Malik of all, Malik. as far as far as second options go, man, respect Malik Monk. No. So who right. the as far as six yeah. men go, I'll respect Malik yeah. Monk, but yeah. he's not, he's he's not even. You just gonna shut, yeah. shut yeah. Leek down like that? Yes. De'Aaron, like that. yes. To bonus. Malik, Malik Monk. No, he's a yeah, good he's, he's a third option. option. Malik Monk's he's the third. Option. Yeah, he's, he's a great rotation player. One. You know who's the first option, Mars? Keegan. Yep. Okay. Yep. I figured. Man. Yo, I got a I got a question though. A couple questions. Is First off, who's the number one option in in Miami? Jimmy Butler, Tyler it's Hero. buckets, Tyler Hero. Yeah, I, so I who who would be considered their number two option? Tyler. Terry. Oh, Terry! I forgot about Terry. 
I was mind the regular season or the playoffs. Like, I don't Come know. Football. I think they do it. That's, oh, that's in, play, play, in, the in general. Just in general, when you think of that team, who was the number one and number it's, two option? It's by committee. I'd say that's one of those few things or the yeah, those few players, teams Jimmy where they Butler. do have an alpha, but an alpha that's very willing to defer in terms of hands on the basketball and offense. Like and their best player, going, their best player is Jimmy Butler. Going. If they need a bucket, they'll go to Tyler Hero, in my opinion. Okay. It's matchup dependent too. Because they get a like a, a dude that Jimmy can just big boy down low. I mean, we saw it with Boston yeah. in the playoffs last year. He made Grant Williams like his son. I mean, he just and he took it straight into the teeth every single time. At least Grant Williams stood up to him. Yeah, I respected uh, it. I respected good, it a good lot. For him. He, he stood up and got cooked. I mean, shout out to him. Good, good one. Hey, I hey, I love I love guys that one like won't take crap from anyone, even if like they're not this premier NBA guy. But like Grant's the type of dude that's jumping with anyone trying to dunk on him. Like mm-hmm. I respect, I respect the hell out of that. Never. Gonna I think it's. I, I, I think it's buckets, Ron. To answer your question, I do. I think it's buckets. He's yeah, their Jimmy, guy. Jimmy's their best player. Yeah. Yeah. So then, my other question is, um, where everybody up here is just comfortable saying that Devin Booker is the number two option for the Suns? Because I don't. He should be. He well, shouldn't be. Not that Kevin Durant's the Wait, best. You, number two. One Wait, of those. Are, two. We, are <laughs> we about to have a Kevin Durant versus Devin Booker conversation again? I'm. At, between who's their Mars, when, two option? I think it's KD. Once again, Mars, we're talking about the better player. Is KD a better player than Devin Booker? I will give yes. you yes, 100%. He is. However, Devin Booker with the ball in his hands, how does that offense run? Should they be running the offense? Should, should Devin Booker be their man and KD be the number two? Should that be the case? Because I because the same thing is going on in Los Angeles with is Anthony it? Davis. It could be one of those situations, though, chill, where KD is that good, where it's like, all right, you can, you know, we're looking for you to get yours off book because KD gonna get his when he wants to. Right. Could it could be one of those situations like you're good enough to be the second option because you're better than the first option. So I do. Think I don't think that I, I won't. Uh, finding a number one is kind of like it doesn't matter yeah. if the Suns number one option and like if Devin Booker has the advantage one night, he gonna take more shots than KD. If KD right. has the advantage, he gonna take more shots. Mm-hmm. Like there's no like that. The search for a hierarchy at all times is kind of weird to me. I agree but that, I do think Kevin Durant is the Suns' best player. And when I'm considering number one guy, for me, number one is the best player. Number two is the second best player. Now, if you want to say if they need a bucket, who do they go to? It's whoever has the matchup in that situation. Mm-hmm. That, that's where I'm at with it. And that's we could when do I said Tyler thing. Hero and Terry Rozier. Semi-trolling, but that's not my troll for the week. Just semi-trolling. But <laughs> their best their best player is Kevin Durant. So that's where I'm at with it. I mean, if, and, and again, sure, because if we're doing that, James was the best player on that championship team in 16. I think Kyrie Irving took more shots than her. I mean, than, than, than Braun did that year. It was either that year or the next year he took more shots than James. But with that being said, I think James was the was the number one, but he did defer to Kyrie Irving when it was necessary. He had the ball in his hands more throughout those series, for sure. LeBron it, did. Yeah, it, I mean, it would have right. surprised me if Kyrie took more shots. But I mean, yeah, he did. But that also goes back to because Kyrie doesn't get to the free throw line enough. LeBron probably got to the free throw line more, and that doesn't count as field goal attempts. So, I mean, if you want, maybe, maybe still LeBron was attempting more shots, but he just drew more fouls. I don't know though. I can't bother to look it up. But Kyrie, just get to the line more, man. You'd benefit. That's what Kyrie, if you're watching this, draw some contact. He's got Hall of Fame slithery, bro. He's not getting touched. But he need Hall of Fame fearless finisher too. He needs to be able to. If he, if Kyrie got to the line eight nine times a game, he'd average right. thirty like every year. I mean, he's too good at like he contorts his body so much in the air to avoid contact for sure. I see that. He's too. Dumb. Nah, I'm not gonna be able to not notice that. He's Dang, too ethical. Thanks. Yeah, he's he's too ethical. Like there's so many times, and and when it works, <laughs> but then there's times where he's like he's too oh, ethical for his own good. Yeah, like in terms of for. <laughs> For the aesthetic, it's perfect. Like, shout out to Kyrie. But for the effectiveness, the times he wants to go up and under and he leaves it short on the rim when he could have went into the defender's body and absorbed that contact and got an ammo. It's like, sometimes you got to play through the contact, get the foul, and it's and it's easy points. And he leaves some points on the board doing that. But the ethics of it is insane. I think I've seen a stat, like, the only people to average 25 with less than, like, five free throw attempts is Kyrie, Steph, and Calvin Murphy one time. That's a Calvin Murphy, but like so ethically fantastic. But in terms of effectiveness, he'd benefit from getting to the line some more. I think he shoots like four free throws a game. It's not great. Uh, Brody sent through a super chat and said, "Mr. Accolades, winning in production, has Dame over Russ all time. That's funny. Chill. Obviously, don't remember PG hot potato in that 2018 series. 
Because the dude was shooting all the shots. What the hell? Just give him the ball. Because Paul George was missing on the shots. We're we got to go back and watch that game <laughs> on playback. We no, I'm being serious. On you want to watch Russell 93, not 83 shots run? 83 I think I'm those like, things, I think both things can be true. Russ probably took a few ill advised shots as Russell Westbrook, but Paul George didn't help himself by right. missing when he did take shots. It, it can go both ways. I mean, yeah, great. Both things could be true, Mars. Because again, yeah. it wasn't like Paul George. He wasn't shooting. He was shooting and he was missing. But then Russ, I think you said in the, in the third, if I remember correctly, in that third quarter, Russ was going off. So, of course, Russ got it going. Go back to him. Sure. Go back to him. Get him the basketball. He, how many times did he hit the, to the free throw line? Who's, I want to know how many shots he really took. He, he, oh, even I, if, I think he had like, I want to say like, I think it was like six or ten free. It was somewhere from six to ten free throws. Right. Okay. It wasn't anything crazy. Uh, Russ. Uh, six free throw attempts. He took six. He took six. Right. Paul George in that game, two. Yeah, there you go. Walker with the super chat said, I remember watching Kai match LeBron's 41 in the 2016 finals while Harrison Barnes fulfilled his clutch sports contract to miss every shot. Good days, man. Hashtag F Harrison Barnes. Kyrie <laughs> has become underrated. Yeah, easy on Harrison. Yo. Easy on Harrison. And I do think Warriors fans hate Harrison Barnes. They do. They I, do. I do think they do. Even though they won it the year before with him. In nah, but what Harrison Barnes was doing in 2016 was borderline on. He was, he was okay, banished right. to the corner right. and just yeah. not shooting a good percentage. That's always right. a tough he look. Make, he couldn't make. He couldn't make a shot. 100. percent He could yeah, not. It was. There was a lid on him, man. There was a lid. When, on te when oh, teams leave, when teams leave you open, you can't be the dog. And team. you can't do you anything. Can't. You cannot see that. Mars, it don't. It, that's what I'm saying. It don't matter if you open or not. If there's a lid on it, it's a it's, it's a lid on it. Like, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. That's not uncontested. I know because yeah, I, I remember that game. Clay Thompson had like I want to say like forty in that game, something close to it. Like he, Clay Thompson yeah. was doing his thing. It felt like a whole series where HP just could not buy a bucket, and he was just butt naked the whole time, wide open in the corner, just you got to channel your inner PJ Tucker mode and just be okay with no one guarding you. Hit corner threes. Yeah, it was bad. The Take Gaming said, "Crazy how we say a sec a career second option is better than a career first option that actually carried Dame over Kyrie. The only thing Kyrie got on Dame is handles. It's easy to have a higher percentage when you play with Bron, Luca, KD, and Harden." Mm. I'm sorry, but I'm, there's no way you're watching Dame play with Giannis, so you're seeing. The percentages, and you're going to say it's easy to have high percentages when you play next to superstars. Yeah, like, also, like... That yeah, worked I mean, when Dame hasn't played with superstars, but now he's played with one and his percentage is bad. You can't use that argument anymore. Now, I can understand adjustment periods. The, the situation is different. He's getting shots in different um, situations. So maybe his rhythm's off, blah, blah, blah. But that argument worked a lot better eight months ago before Dame had ever played with a superstar. Now he's playing with one, and his percentage isn't like Kyrie's. I'm sorry. It doesn't hit the same as it used to. Back when you could just say, hey, man, put Dame in Steph's situation. He wins just as many. It looks a lot better when Dame hadn't played with anyone. Now he, he's playing with someone, and he doesn't look like Steph Curry. So what, what you guys fail to realize is it's much like in Dame's role in uh, for the Trailblazers as opposed to his role now, it's much easier to be a number one option. It's much easier to have the, the you know the freedom to do whatever you want. It's much easier to have plays drawn up for you. It's much easier to be able to know that you can miss five shots in a row, and you're still going to be able to shoot the six shot without anything you know without any consequences or penalties. Also, you get to play yourself into rhythm. You get to step on the court with rhythm. You're leaving last game with rhythm. You got the ball in your hands all game. It's easy to be the number one option when you're that guy. As a number two option, you got to defer. You got to pick and choose. And it's just it's it's a lot more thinking that goes into it. Are you saying that as a number one option, I have less responsibility as a, than a number two? Is that what you're trying to tell me, Ron? You, you have to no, think you, less. I think is what he's saying. Yeah, you. It's, it's as a it's, as a number one to... option, I have to think less than a number two option. I, th I, I think he's not saying there's le not not. You're, you're second I don't guessing know if accountability less. is the right word, but as a number one option, you don't find yourself in a position where they're gonna go away from you if you're struggling. As a number two. You miss four shots in a row. Hey, we just not gonna be going. Wouldn't to that, and that's a luxury of being a number two as a number that's one. What I'm saying, you can that. view it from either perspective. I think Ron's yes. saying 
it's easier as a, as a as a number one because hey, you know the team's gonna live and die by your hands. So hey, if you go six for twenty, we we ain't we not trusting anyone else but you. Yeah. So we're I'm we're gonna you. go. You're gonna get your twenty shots. We're gonna we live with the results. Whereas as a number two, if you're not hit and we just go into someone else, so you Look don't at know it. how many. You don't know how many shots you're going to get on a game-to-game basis, so your role is less consistent. Look at it from a confidence perspective, too. Yeah, that, That's what Ron's saying. I'm not saying I necessarily agree. I'm just saying I understand right. where he's coming but, from. No, I, I think there's, there's benefits and disadvantages to both situations. There's, there's 100% there are, but when I think about a number one, a prime example, Jason Tatum in the 22 NBA Finals. He's got his head down on the sideline. Big fella, we're not going to stop coming to you. We're going to keep coming to you. But I don't have that. I don't have the luxury of you being a number two, and you miss a couple of shots, and you put your head down, and we just stop coming to you. No, we're gonna live and die with me, with what I do. So it's way more pressure on me as the number one because you guys depend on me way more than you do the number two. That's why I'm the number one. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would I would say so. Dame's Dame's numbers are down. His percentages are down right now. Right and. His his shot percentage or his shot attempts are down as well. I think a large a large part of his percentage is going down is due to him just not being comfortable, him not being in rhythm. A lot of that is because he doesn't have the ball in his hands all game. I think it's it's been much harder for Dame to be a number two option than it it has been to be a number one. Yeah, first time in his career too. I know it's late in his career, um, but like think about like I'll, I'll think about like when I play pickup now, like. Going from being on the on the bad team where I got to, like, be the primary ball handler, do this and that, um, and then, like, the next game, you get on with some dudes that are better, and I'm like, okay, I can be more of, like, a, a catch and shoot, uh, like, focus on defense, rebounding, that whole shebang. Like, it's so different, and it, and it, it messes me up just in pickup, um, you know, but, like, I can't imagine at the biggest stage, like, having to make that transition is has got to be so tough. Hey, Slim, when's the last time you dunked on somebody? <laughs> last time I dunked was like three years ago. I broke my left ankle and uh, never again. <laughs> yeah, that's rough. It's the down part to the game. Yeah. Things like that happen. Yeah, I, I had a I had a phase where I was dunking pretty consistently in drills and, and warm-ups, but I never been the type, I never been a body type dude. <laughs> My, I ain't got no tricks either. I'm just maybe cocking back a little further. That was the Slip. only cool thing I could do. What's your comp? My comp? Yeah. Mars, we'll see if it stays true to the consistency of what we were talking about when we comp people. Okay. Um, I'll say <laughs> it depends on who I'm playing with. Like if I'm playing good runs, um, I'll play like more of a big because I'm 6'4", like 195, um, and I love playing back to the basket. So I would say, like, in that situation, like, Alperin Shangun, I, I like, just footwork, methodical, pump fake, step through, finish with both hands. Um, if I if I play out on the perimeter, uh, my jumper isn't as ugly, but I say Kyle Anderson. Um, I'm not super Ooh, quick twitch. Yes. Yeah, yes. I'm, not, I, I'm not super quick twitch uh, or anything, and I'm, I'm, I'm not a flashy ball handler, but I use a lot of just, like, subtle hezzies, half spins. Um, just kind of like essentially meandering on down to the rim at my own pace. Uh, so you can like pass. That. Yeah, yeah, I, can pa or can yeah. I, I I love passing out of the post. I love it when people Laker cut off of a post feed, that kind of thing. Hey, Slim, you sound like I'm partially black. black. I, I played I played <laughs> D three ball, um, like nothing high level crazy, and I was a scrub <laughs> too. But the biggest thing I I like learned from playing D three ball is just like. Anything, I guess, past playing high school basketball at a high level, if you can get past that, like, you just learn the game uh, in, in a completely different way. Because even from high school to college is such a different game. And then from college to the NBA or even just, like, EuroLeague, NBL, like, CBA, like, it's so different. Like, you just have to play the game so differently. You have to game plan differently. Like, but I, I don't know. I, that's That was a, the biggest thing for me. Uh and I had good coaches too, good player development, and I learned how to develop a real back to the basket game and play with with pace. That's what's up. That's what's up. Shout out to everybody out there that's playing college basketball, no matter the level you're playing at, whether it's D three, NAI. I personally played NAI, D two, whatever. As long as you get in a scholarship, 
to be able to go to school and it's getting paid for. You doing your thing. Uh, boys, shout out to girls, you, everybody. Yeah, shout out, shout out to all the University. Students. Coach Wallace, you the you GOAT. No doubt. Shout out to all the student athletes, man. That's a grind. That's a grind. For real. For sure. For Mimo, said better duo, Kyrie and Braun or Jokic and Murray? In terms of fit Brown. or the combination of how good the two players are? I got it. That's a trap. I want to answer. Well, Kyrie oh, and Bron. It is. Kyrie, it is Kyrie and Bron are better in combination than Jokic and Murray. <laughs> yeah. I don't care how we're talking about. Okay, how we're talking about. In terms of fit, Kyrie and Bron are better than Jokic and Bron. It just is. It just is. Let's not let's let's not beat around the bush here. Yeah. Let's let's say let's say what we got to say and get it out the way. Oh, because they they, they, Kyrie and Bron, and that's it. That's all. That's the end of conversation. They send super chats like that to see if you can say if you're gonna say something wild. They start screen recording on their phone. Yeah. See if you're gonna say something. Yeah. See if you're gonna say something wild. I mean, Kyrie, what what why, and Bron had him running eighty. Like, this, this Kyrie and Bron had him running eighty. One more time, Oz. Kyrie and Bron better than Bron and eighty. It's just that that it's just that that Bron was better than this Bron. Even though this Bron is still dope. A, a 39, that Bron 20, 20, 26, 2016 Kyrie and Bron or twenty twenty Bron and eighty. Man, I'll call it a toss up. I'd say it's pretty close. Different take, different styles I'll, I'll, of basketball. I'll, I'll, I'll take 2020 Braun and AD. Man, 2020 AD. I mean, I'll do the cup. I don't know if y'all Kyrie remember. Small for 2016 because he was coming back from a knee injury. So I'm gonna just take Braun and AD for health. If, if you get if you got AD isolated anywhere within 20 feet of the basket, was there was a 75 percent chance it was a bucket. He was it was money. insane. Like mid range into the, the rim. Of the basketball. Yeah. He and was he crazy. Was elite. So at yeah, that, I, I'll, I'll I'll I, I said at that point that he was the best player in the world. At that moment in time, he looked like the most dominant player in basketball. I'll own that. And that's what was supposed to happen. The transition was supposed to be James was supposed to take more of a back seat, and AD was supposed to accept that, well, except mm -hmm. he started breaking down, and it just didn't yeah. work. And Braun kind of still plateaued. Like his digression was minimum, minimal. Right. Yeah. Year yeah. After year. We were expecting him to go this way, only except he was still doing this. That first LA year. Uh, he had a like a career down year in terms of relativity to his last like 10 years before that right. in Cleveland and Miami. And I literally like had a, a moment where I said in my brain, like, OK, this is the beginning of the downfall of LeBron. Not that he was going to be bad, but like we're not going to see the same Bron. I was thinking like Wizards, Jordan, you know, we're right. going to start to get to that point. And then it just didn't happen. And he just got better again and still is <laughs> really, really good playing at a high level. Chill. Before we last question, before we get to these power rankings, and I'm trying to wait for Domino to get here too, so we can really get into it. But we'll start without him. But what are you expecting from LeBron? Let's say they make the playoffs. What are you expecting from him in the playoffs? I expect him to involve AD more. I expect him to shoot the basketball like he does. I expect him to be James, which is bad because he's not. I expect him to play like James plays in the playoffs which is bad because he's not. And I think that's the downside to this. I expect him to be awesome like James has been in the past, but he's not because he's older and it's going to show. I saw it last year when they were playing against Memphis and he could do it in stretches. He just couldn't do it for long stretches. And I'm every time I see him, it's basically the same as we talk about with Clay Thompson. The fact that he's out there, we expect to see that Clay, only except that's not him anymore. He's not that guy anymore, but we expect because he's out there to eventually he's going to come back. And whenever I see James, I expect the James that I've seen in the playoffs in years past. And that's just not him anymore. Should the Lakers try to rest Ron over this, like this little. They're gonna I make the playoffs. We do my rest. Yeah, we don't have any. They don't have call the fourth rest. rest. No, they don't. I, I hate, to, I hate to call it the right? second half of the season because it's not really. They're they're already fifty games in, so it's like right. the last third of the season, if you will, or last like forty percent. But either way it goes, um, I still think that they'll make the playoffs. I'm I'm more so talking about coast into the playoffs as opposed to try to. Right now they're the they're the ninth seed as opposed to try to get the fourth or fifth seed, kind of stay like where they're at. Give Ron a couple nights off. 
could they, could they, could they, could they go on a run like that? Well, the only way for them to go on a run like that is they have to be consistent at something, and they haven't been consistent at anything all year long. Now, don't get me wrong. We saw last year, those last 28 games, I think they won 20 of the last 28 games because the defense picked up. Is the defense going to pick up like that again? I'm not sure if, if you could duplicate that. It'd be nice if they could duplicate that, but I'm not sure if they can. As of right now, Ron, they're three and a half games out the five spot today. They're three and a half games out the five spot. Is it ridiculous that they could jump up to the five spot? Well, a lot of things have to go wrong for a bunch of other teams. Like New Orleans has to go the other way. Sacramento has to go the other way. In order Dallas. for them to – Dallas has to go the other way. In order for these guys to jump from the nine to the five spot. But I think that it's – I don't think it's sustainable if they don't do anything consistent and if they run into Denver. I think they want OKC. Whatever team OKC is, I think they want OKC. So if OKC stay in two, they're going to try to get the seven seed. So they're going to want to be seven or eight when they're playing they're really looking at OKC like we could beat them, yo. Everybody, well, everybody, think about who's around them. Everybody is, chill. That's, that's, yeah, okay. that's Minnesota. If the Lakers could pick a matchup, they'd want OKC, I think. Yeah, I think so, too. I think just because Minnesota is so stifling defensively um, and what they can do to disrupt you with all their dudes is crazy. Um, LA Clippers, you right. just got a lot of experience, guys. I look at it like... T Wolves, Clippers, Nuggets, Suns. Out of those four, the T Wolves are the least playoff experience team, but they're the best team. And then you look at all the like Clippers, Nuggets, Suns. Like that's a lot of guys who have been in those situations plenty of times. They're going to be comfortable. The Thunder have never, no experience. This sounds crazy as hell to me that a number two or a number one seed or possibly a number one seed, other teams are looking at them going, "That's what we want to see." Yeah, we teams want to Utah in twenty twenty one. Seems like regular season we, basketball is we, different. We can beat them. Like re- regular season record, like I, I, I said, look at the I Jazz. Tried look, I tried to not look at record and just look at how the team plays. Right. So I like I'm not really bothered too much with who the number one seed is. If I think the team in the three seed is a better team than them or matches up better in the playoffs, like as long as the teams make the playoffs, the seeding don't really matter to me. Kind of like Milwaukee. Like, yeah, that. like sure. yeah, that, that's where I'm at with it. Like. I hear all the time if I don't think a team's that good, well, they're the number two seed. Like, so who good for them? They're winning Remember, the regular season. I wasn't, I don't think anyone was really terrified of the one seed Jazz going into the playoffs a few years ago. Like, they were a good team, don't get me wrong, but they, they, like, I'm, I'm more worried about teams that have like experience winning playoff games because playoff basketball is so different than regular season basketball. When you can sit down and game plan for a team for a minimum of four games in a row. It just it changes everything. It's way different, and, than and that's not me saying the regular season doesn't matter. By the way, no, yeah, it does. I'm, it's just yeah. different. I'm, ju- I'm just saying the actual seeding itself doesn't tell you who the best teams are in the in playoff basketball. So I'm looking less at that and how these teams play in the regular season. That's what I'm looking, at. not their record or whatever. That's what I'm saying. I've been tricked before, Mars. I'm, I, I won't lie about that. I've definitely been tricked before, where I've seen a high seed and I'm like, yo, these dudes are serious, only to find out that they fools gold. The Cavs in 09. Absolutely. I got tricked. 100% <laughs> I did. I got tricked. 2012 Jeff Atlanta Hawks? Jeff I don't think that, I don't think oh, that they were fool's gold. I don't. I do not think that <laughs> no, they, they were they, they weren't They weren't fool's gold. They went no. to the conference finals and they lost to Braun. That's, that was the problem. That was it. That it was, was the problem. Was if Braun, it wasn't yeah. for James. That, I, I, that team was going to get mopped in the finals they anyway. They weren't, really, they weren't going to win. I, yo, I think that team was the definition <laughs> wait, of close goals. Like, wait, wait, no, no, even wait, wait, even, wait, if, no. even if they did, even goal, if they, I think that that Atlanta like, Hawks they, 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 they get mauled. They wait, what, they what, what year you talking about? 2015, 2015. They would have lost to the Warriors in two and a half games. Bud would have thrown in the tower half-time game. You think the Warriors were not doing anything. You think the Warriors smoked them, Rob? Destroy them. Oh Any God. iteration of that Hawks team with no disrespect to Al Horford, no disrespect to who else do they have over there? Josh Kyle Smith, Harvard, Paul Millsap. Smith, no, that's Mills not. That's Jeff not. That's Lee, not. Kyle that's Kyle not going to be a sleep yeah. or nothing like that. Every that team. game. That goes, no, that goes six games. That goes, that, goes, that goes six games. At they would have lost the Rockets games. if the Rockets got out the West. They were getting destroyed. So like they shout out to the Hawks. There, shout out to them. Hey, that was my two K team. That Hawks team was nice. I think that Hawks team was nice. That was the last season. Where the Hawks starting five got player of the month in the East. That's crazy. They whole starting five. Yes, the whole starting five. Why, but like, but I think it might have been like for February or January or something. The starting five was the East player of the month. 
That's fire. Right. Hey, so oh, that team, that team, that team does not does not get smoked by the Warriors. Bye. I don't I'm think so, to... personally. They, that was that that was that was a, that was a solid team. That team was really good. I, I want to say that series. What is that? You know what Steph T- Steph Curry does to Jeff Teague in that series? You know what Joe Johnson oh. does to everybody that series? Clay Ta- hey. Was Steph Joe Johnson? Ta- I think Joe Johnson was in Brooklyn. Hey, at that's that point. the more the Clay Thompson Thompson crew at that point. He, he was, was gone. Joe Johnson was gone. This was yeah, fifteen. This was, we're talking about fifteen or this 12? is like 15. No, 15, okay. 15. Yeah, fifteen. This is like Paul Millsap, Josh this, Smith. This, still, this, this, the, was Josh Smith in Detroit Jeff at that point? Kyle Korver, Paul Millsap, Al Horford, Damari Carroll. That's who was He was he was already gone by fifteen. Josh yeah, Smith yeah, was gone yeah, by 15. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah, sure. Johnson was gone. Jerry Johnson was gone. This is the, they, they Cephalosha split the, I think they. Right? Yeah. Is this the year Cephalosha had the incident? So, yeah, New York. Yes. That year. Ken Bazemore's on that team. I'll, 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 I'll be worried. I'll be forgetting other people. Ken Bazemore was kind of. He was, he was all right at that moment in time. Ken yeah, was, yeah, the Warriors would. Man. Shout out to the Hawks, man. Good, good Ken Bazemore, the forever prospect. Just always mm-hmm. about, just about to take the, the next step, about to take the lead. From a roster, from a roster standpoint, Mars, yeah, I can get with that. You're looking at the roster going, how did these dudes win 60 games? What the hell is going on? But offensively, they were damn good, Joe. They were. With Kyle Corver shooting the long ball. Jeff Teague made the all-star team that year. So did Kyle Corver. I'm pulling that's how they were rolling. <laughs> yes. They were rolling. And the only team they lost to was the Cavs. I told you this already, Molly. With 14 games over 500 against the Western Conference that year. 14 games. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand that when you get into the playoffs, I got a week to do this and focus solely on you. And whatever it is that – one thing about the playoffs that I've always recognized, whatever you don't know how to do, we will shine an interrogation light on it. Whatever, and, Rudy and, Gobert, and every single year in the playoffs. 100%. We are going to sign – we're going to shine a light on you. Now – what could what what could Atlanta have done? What 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 could Atlanta have done to slow down Golden State? Well, their interior presence, Al Hoffit was really good that year. Right? Al Hoff and, and their interior guys, what's his what's his, uh, 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 Paul Millsap? Not and, and Paul Millsap, but I'm thinking about the Warriors interior guy of of a I, I can't remember. Is it Zaza? Dray, Draymond and Bogut. No, it was Draymond and Bogut that year. Is was he? it Draymond? That's what I'm thinking Festus, about. Yeah, Festus was oh, but Bogo was oh, that. Bogo okay. Bogo was that. Right. So, so, so we don't bring it on Festus. Festus and I hate Festus Azili. I'm not even worried. <laughs> Why? Him. How could you hate him? What's your problem? problem? Oh, yeah, you're new. Game seven, 2016. Let me paint the picture. Oh, Game seven. Go <laughs> uh, get Mars started. <laughs> the, war, the Warriors are up. The Warriors are up. Festus Azili has to come in because I believe someone comes in foul trouble. Festus Azili. Gives up three three pointers in three possessions and fouls on another one. That <laughs> ruins the whole game. Best of Azili played three minutes and lost the Warriors the finals. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I hate Best him, and I'm not the Warriors fan anymore. Though. Yeah, Sounds, but it was all time, the way he came all time of name because of his injuries and stuff. But I'll never forgive him for giving up that many threes in three minutes. Mm-mm. Unforgivable. <laughs> all right, too. that's fair. That's fair. Masinko G sent through a super chat and said the Hawks team wasn't even better than the Bulls in 2015. But Bulls, yes, they were. That Bulls team should have been up three one on the Cavs, but they the refs want to cheat. That Bulls team would have made a little run in the East. Unfortunately, how did the the refs cheat? Because David Black tried to call a timeout when the Cavs ain't have one, and they ain't give um, the Bulls their technical free throw, and then LeBron James turned around and ended up hitting a game winner. But that wouldn't have been possible if the Bulls. If the Bulls got that technical free throw, LeBron James doesn't hit a game. And they, and they get the ball back. And the Bulls would have gone up 3-1. But nah, they ain't want to do that. And the LeBron fans won't, don't want to bring that up when they talk about LeBron's eight straight finals. But maybe they think they would have come back 3-1 on the Bulls. I don't know, maybe. But they should have been down 3-1. That, Mars, that's kind of got <laughs> they, <laughs> like, I'm not, Fine. If you want to say I the Cavs would have came it. back in that series, fine. I'm not even going to argue should they have come back. They should have been down 3-1. We should have seen if they could have come back. The reason they weren't down 3-1 and it was 2-2 is because the refs didn't do their job. And that's just the fact of the situation. I don't know what to say. That's just the fact of the situation. Mars, they couldn't so, do that to Brown right then and Bulls there. were robbed. They the couldn't do robbed. that. But, fellas, let's go ahead and start here. We're going to start with uh, the power rankings from January. I know it says February power rankings. This is mm-hmm. actually the power rankings from last month in January. How... 
is there any predictions on what what will happen from these power rankings? Yeah, the Bucks and the Sixers are going to drop. Mm-hmm. Then Bucks and the, the Bucks, the Bucks, the Clippers, the Bucks and the stay in the Mavs will Pelican. probably rise. Um, the, where's the, oh, the Cavs are going up for sure. The Cavs are going oh, yeah. up. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Cavs have a uh, like regular season jazz, fool's gold type energy right now. In my, are the Warriors my are the Warriors going up too? A little they? bit. A little bit. Uh, 21. Oh, at 21? Yeah, the Warriors are going up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they go up. Warriors go up. Uh, the Suns will probably go up. Hey, Ron, up. Where's, where are the Pistons? Uh, oh, you're not showing up. The, oh, the Wizards go down. The Wizards go down mm-hmm. to 30 instead of 29. Yeah. That's where I got no. them. Yeah, the Wizards. We see 10, 20, and 30. You see it now? Hold on. Hold I on. Can't. Yeah, we Wizards are not bad in the Pistons. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, the Warriors, the Warriors probably move up the most. And the Bucks probably move down the most. That's probably. Yeah. I think the Cavs, Pels go up Cavs too. Probably, Cavs probably move up the most. Oh wait, Cavs fourth. Uh, the Cavs might move up to the higher spot, but I don't think they're going to move up as much as the Warriors. Mm. Well, you're going to be. You, you're not going to be happy with me. Yeah, I know you probably got the Cavs at like two, but so combine this for a reason. So. Okay. I might have the Cavs uh, at twenty-seven. But let's help. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to get rid of all of these, and we're going to start at 30 and work our way all the way down to one. I hope you guys got 30 correct. Yeah, the Pistons. I have have questions for a lot of these teams. For a lot of you can't give me legit logic on why the Pistons ain't the worst team in the league. Take the record off. Take the record off the the table. The Wizards have one more win than the Pistons, by the way. Right. Right. So, I've been saying this, and apparently the Wizards haven't won since I said they were the worst team in the league because they right. had nine wins like three weeks ago. So I don't know what their losing streak is right now. Mm-hmm. They're cooked. The only reason you think the Pistons are the worst team in the league is because they have the worst record in the league. Not just and that. Not just that. They're not better than the Pistons. Not, 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 not just that. Not not just that. If I'm not mistaken, Mars, I believe the Wizards, not the Wizards, I'm sorry, the Pistons are at the bottom of the league in everything. Not some things in everything scoring, <laughs> in scoring every offense, category? defense, nah, they know, rebounding, they know. scoring, everything. They're at the mm-hmm. bottom of the league in yes. everything. And I can't leave out the fact, which is the most important part of this, Ron. They lost almost 30 straight games this year. That's the worst team in the league. By they know, far. They, know, they beat the worst the, team in the league. They know, they, it was, they beat, it was, it was about those 40 plus games. It was about, if, if Toronto doesn't <laughs> screw that up, the, the, the Detroit Pistons lose 40 straight games. That's the worst team in the league. You can't give me legit logic, Mars. That's not the worst team in the game. They, they're the worst team in the league. I don't know what's no. So I, I have I have questions for a lot of these teams, but this actually brings me to, to my first question. And Slim and Mars, I have to ask you guys specifically because everybody had the Pistons at number 30, except for Mars had him at 29, Pirate had him at 29, Fluent had him at 29, and Slim, you had him at 28. Why? Oh, you got the Hornets below them? You got the Hornets below them? I like, yeah. your thinking. I like your thinking. I like your thinking. I I think that the Pistons' biggest issue is closing games out. And honestly, I'm not going to act like I did a ton of research um, for the teams at the bottom. Uh, you know, like in that case, I'm. It's it's more so eye test for me. And also, I don't think it should factor in, but I can't help but just subjectively factoring in the fact like I like their roster direction right now. I really like their mainstay pieces and. I think Cade, um, if he can be in a position where he doesn't have to be the primary ball handler quite as much as he is, then I think he's going to be an awesome player. He already is an awesome player, but like, I, I'm, I when Cade was like, I don't think we're two and thirty, whatever bad. Like, I was with him. I'm like, I don't think this team is that terrible. Um, but I, don't know, I think cutting Killian Hayes is a step in the right direction. I mean, <laughs> the fact that he got minutes. Get Killian Hayes off the floor. Still hasn't yeah. been picked up, by the way. Just still hasn't <laughs> Yeah, been. like, I, I don't think he's, like, a, a terrible player. But the fact that he was playing, like, like 15 to 20 minutes a game on an NBA team was was nuts after. Starting like, over Jaden Ivey. But, um, insane. Yeah. Insane. Mark thinks he's the worst player in the league. Well, he's not in the league no more. So when he was yeah. in the league, Mark thought he was. I mean, he was the worst player in the league. There are worse guys in the league, but at the same time, like there are guys that are projects. Killian Hayes 
physically, he's not becoming anything. You're not like, man, if he can really get this down, it's like, he's going to be a problem. It's like, no, he's just kind of like a, what is he, like a 6'5 point guard? Um, that's not you a know great... You he was compared to James Harden coming in, right? Because <laughs> he's a lefty, right? Yeah, just putting sure that's it. To James Harden coming but, in. I mean, like, Dexter Dennis is in the league right now, I think, um, like on a two-way or something. I think Killian Hayes is better than him, but at least D-Dex has got like a little... He's like a 6'6 combo guard, like bouncy as heck, developing some type of jump shot. Like those guys are worse, but I don't know. I'm still taking D. When I said that, I meant he was the worst player getting like legitimate minutes. I was That's like, fair. These end of bench guys, they don't really count. When anyone who was actually playing, Killian Hayes was the worst player in the league. That's and fair. they got rid of him. But the, the, the Pistons were doing their best to sabotage their team this year with what they were doing with their wing situation. Monty Williams was actively blowing up the team from the inside. I don't know what he was doing. <laughs> he wants so, Killian to marry his daughter. And I would, and I was contemplating like before if this if we made this list before the trade deadline, Charlotte probably would have been my twenty eight. But because they've looked good post trade deadline, and Brandon Miller seems to be hooping, and they won a couple games, and they they look functional, I couldn't put them at twenty eight. But the Wizards are for sure worse than the Pistons. Are. Like I'm not changing my mind on that. But I know they're going to still come thirtieth, but the Wizards are worse. Well, you are right, Mars. The yeah. Pistons are 30th. And at 29, we do have none other than the Washington Wizards. Uh, I think we all know who the bottom four teams are going to be. Well, no, maybe not. Um, but we have the Pistons and the Wizards at 30, Wizards at 29. Uh, I have a super chat, too, from Almighty Lamborghini. He said, Slim knows ball, and he has a dashing mustache. By the way, you want thin ice, young Mars. Tired of you dissing the future East champs in Ohio. How are you going to say Slim Nose Boo and he said the Cavs are fool's gold? <laughs> Put him on thin ice. Don't listen to him. I didn't say that. Prove nah, it. Okay, no, nah, he ain't saying that. <laughs> All right, so we have the Pistons and the Wizards. Um, do we have any predictions for 28? The Spurs. Yes, San Antonio. I don't think you guys would put Portland below the Spurs. So, I was yeah, probably San Antonio or uh, Charlotte. Yeah, well, Charlotte been hooping. Charlotte been hooping. And so, yeah, a little at, new blood. At twenty six. Oh, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. I put the Spurs. But we have a tie between the Spurs and, and the Hornets, and we have to break that tie. Who's the worst team between those two? Or between, between the Spurs and between the, the Spurs, Spurs are what the Spurs are worse than the Hornets. I, I say Hornets are worse than the Spurs. I'm all right, so we're, 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 we're gonna take a, 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 a toll or a tally and see which team gets to 26. So Mars, you have the, the, Spur, the Spurs are worse. Yes, I have the Hornets better than the Spurs, yes. Okay. Slim, you have the Spurs? All right, we're at 1-1 one, one right now. Chill, what direction are you going? San Antonio is number 28. So the, so Hornets, the Hornets are better. better. Yes, yeah, the Hornets, Hornets are better. Than All right. Yeah. Two for the Hornets, one for the Spurs. Ox, talk to us. Um, I got the Hornets being worse than the Spurs. So it's like 2-2? Two, two? Yeah. Yep. Sounds like Ron? a guitar break around. Or is it the chat? We're going to go with the chat. I'm, I'm going to get the chat involved. Who is better, the Hornets or the Spurs? If Dama was here, he would be the tiebreaker, but Dama was not here. Oh, Dama. Yet. Why do you think the Hornets are worse than the Spurs to the people who said that? I mean, I, I just think it's it's kind of seems like a ragtag group of random pieces. And right, right now we're seeing the the boost of like new blood in an organization that really has been going nowhere for the past like three, four years. Really like not a lot going on there. And also Brandon Miller's coming into his own, which which helps. But I see the Spurs as as a better team. The roster might be better in Charlotte, but the Spurs, I I from the eye test from what I've seen, they play better bat. I think they're a better team. If, if the Spurs snuck into a playing spot, I'd be more scared to see that, which like would it's not going to happen, but I'm just saying in a, a hypothetical, I'd be way scared. I'd be way more scared to play the Spurs in seven or in, in like have to win four games on the Spurs than win four games on the Hornets. Well, I think if Lamelo's there, this isn't even a question. I think the only reason this is a question is because Lamelo is not there. So the yeah. Hornets are trash. Correct. But 
So I'm I'm still gonna factor in the fact that Lamelo hasn't played, and I don't remember the last time I seen Mark Williams play. Uh, mm. Last been, it was like, before it was before. Yeah, for like the last two months, every time I watch a Charlotte game, Mark years. Williams hasn't been there. Yes. So like I'm factoring in that when I when I think about them, and right. I will wholeheartedly admit I'm moved by these post trade deadline, um, the play because before the trade deadline, they looked bad, <laughs> like very very bad, but. As of late, I think their offense has looked better. Brandon Miller's coming into his zone. He's getting more reps as an on-ball creator, which I like. Um, number zero over there seems to be doing his thing. And um, the addition of Grant Williams is good too. Yeah, like I think it seems just more cohesive over there. Whereas I think the Spurs have a clear like direction. But I mean, you get Wemby, you're going to have a direction. Mm. But I don't think that's enough for me to say they're a better team today than the Hornets. I think they. I, I think I both like the, the teams are very, very bad. I think both the teams are just really <laughs> terrible, terrible teams. Just absolutely abysmal. Both I mean, suck. Both, both of these teams. I mean, they suck very bad. Um, but with that being said, the Spurs got a. Their their best player is better than their best player. So they I got a bright go spot. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like they, their nice best player. their best player is better than their, their best player. So I gave them the nod. Yeah, I, I like what they have, too, in terms of, like, their young core. I don't think it's that every single guy is, like, a got to hold on to, like, mainstay. But I think Keldon Johnson is, is a guy like that, that you don't want to get rid of. I think Devin Vassell is a solid player, but he's movable as well as Sohan. I think Collins is one of the better backup bigs. All of them dudes are movable. You yeah, like Zach Collins? I do. I think he's a solid player. You don't I, used to like, I, I used to like him. Then I started watching him, like, more and more. Since he, when we moved to the five, he's a, and I'm he's like, a liability. This defense, this defense is bad. I'm he is, bad. and he gets he gets blocks. That's why I'm not a big fan of defensive statistics as a true like way to tell how good of a defensive player is because context is important. But yeah, he does not move his feet well at all. But he's solid. He's just a solid backup big. I'd be happy to have him in my big rotation. Yeah, all right, y'all. Here's what we're looking at. Yeah. I ran the poll. The Hornets won the poll, so the Hornets are at 27, and the Spurs are at 28. Uh, moving along to 26, I think this is probably the Portland. most predictable pick that we can get out of everything. It is the Portland Trailblazers. They'd be higher if Shaden Sharp was healthy, but well. Mm -hmm. Scoot's coming along, too. He's starting to look more comfortable. Don't tell, that to don't, some, don't tell that to some of these dudes up here. <laughs> Man, people just – people get that the, – the narrative right away was Scoot, Scoot isn't good. He's and stuck. We'll hold on he's a, he's a bust. He's going to be out the league. Like, wait a minute. Y'all don't get call it, call it, call it some, Calling someone a bust in three months is insane. Damn. Damn. We just got – I just got here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't All know right. what I'm doing. Predictions for 25. What the do we Grizzlies? think for 25? Is it the Grizzlies? Raptors Memphis. at Memphis. 25. We do indeed have the Memphis Grizzlies. Okay, all right. So, 25, we got the Grizzlies, 26, the Blazers, 27, the Hornets, 28, the Spurs, 29, the Wizards, and not surprisingly, last, we have the Pistons. Very surprisingly, a... don't do that. It's very surprising. They should have <laughs> used. You're the only one. You're in the minority, Mark. I mean, we're I'm, arguing. I'm the only one who watches the Pistons. I'm we're arguing I'm about which. I'm the only one subjecting myself to an eight-win yes. team because they're not worse. They're not worse than I, I, I tried. I tried watching them early in the season. I'm good. I'm we're arguing about I'm which good. trash smells better right now. That's all it is. Yes, we that's what the, we're doing. We, we, hey, we, I'm we fighting for Detroit. Detroit, you are not we're, the worst team in the league. We are fighting over the best-looking ugly chick. That's what we're doing right now. <laughs> I mean, ugly people need to be ranked too. Yeah. Almighty Lamborghini said, I didn't hear Slim diss the Cavs. <laughs> My bad. I'm off the bandwagon. L Stash and Duran missing half half the season and forgetting Ivy was good. Good plays a big part in why we were so bad. Still L Mars. Yeah, Mon Monty Williams didn't help himself. And neither did Troy Weaver. Because the fact that he went into the season knowing Boyan was hurt and they said, hey, Isaiah Livers and Ke Kevin Knox are your wings. Like, I don't know what success you're expecting. Oh, because Isaiah God. Livers, since he's been hurt, so I'm still not calling him the worst player in the league because he hasn't played in Washington because he's been hurt. But right. once if he gets in that Wizards rotation, he's the worst player in the league. Isaiah Livers is trash. 
But yeah, the roster construction was bad, and Monty Williams' belief in Killian Hayes definitely killed them a little bit. Baffling. But they still better than the Wizards after what didn't even tell. It didn't even tell Ivy he wasn't starting them. He didn't even say nothing to him about it. That's crazy. Terrible coaching. All right, y'all. Next up at 24. We have the Toronto Raptors. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. I, 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 I have Brooklyn. Brooklyn, I think, should be next. Right. Yeah. So yeah, Toronto is not very good. Yeah. They got some pieces that 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 yeah, are good they got to build like a on. new team. Yeah, they got some pieces that, but they from time to time, like with Dennis Schroeder and Scotty Barnes, they, they look like the Keystone Cops out there sometimes. Like totally bumping into each other and like you know nobody has an idea what's going on. Scotty Barnes wants to play on the wing, then he doesn't want to play, then he doesn't want to play on the wing, and he wants to be the primary ball handler. I don't, I'm not sure what they're doing into it. I'm not. I like that coach. I think that coach is okay. But the, the only players I like on that team, to be honest, is Scotty Barnes and Emmanuel Quickly. I like RJ like too. And, and Grady. Like I like Grady too. I like Grady. Other than that, meh. Like RJ's cool, but meh. And then everyone else just doesn't fit the timeline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, meh. So, yeah. Um, that's it. Scotty Barnes and Emmanuel Quickly. And RJ's yeah. a mediocre. I thought they were going to move off of uh, Chris uh, Boucher, too, at, at the trade deadline. I'm surprised they didn't. I thought he's a nice. Who thought they were going to move off of? Who, who off, of, move off, of, Chris, off of Chris Boucher. Oh, okay. I like. I thought him. it was going to move off of Chris Brown, but they didn't. So hmm. you know, yeah, I don't know what the plan is. Because Bruce Brown hasn't looked good in Toronto, by the way. Just anytime I watch him, it doesn't look great. Moving along at 23, we got the Brooklyn Nets. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You think that you think that calling me an old man hurts my feelings, you broken light bulb head. Your pistons are the worst <laughs> team in the league. I don't care what you say. Anything that you say after that doesn't matter. Leaky penhead, get out of here. Second, second worst team in the league. Yeah. Damn. I'm sorry. <laughs> no more. It says clearly right there number 30. Yeah, but our power ranking is incorrect. Yes, you are. Uh, this is one of the more consistent picks coming in 22 across the board. Everybody was pretty much on the same page as with this one. Uh, we got the Atlanta Hawks. Mm. Ooh. Uh, 22. Everybody Did I have had them in 21, yeah. 22, or 23. Everybody had them there. Okay, I, I had them at 20. Oh, oh yeah, this makes sense. Okay, actually, this makes sense. You were actually the highest that everybody. The, I'm expecting a son. I, I, think, I think Quinn Snyder is a, is a freaking savant. And he's gonna find a way to make this team. I think he is, man. Yeah, I agree with you. Watch what he does love, offensively. Love, love, yeah, I, I think he's great. Offensive, offensively, yeah. Defensively, well, well, offensively, yeah. He he he, a great coach. So why yeah. isn't it why isn't it better with Trey? What's the problem? Quinn Snyder being a former point guard, coaching Mike Conley, the and, and doing no, what they was doing. The, the defense is the problem. They were well. They they were a top four defense. Where did they yeah. rank in defense? Let's see. Where did they rank in defense? I don't think. They oh, they lost. Yeah, I don't think they're I think it's I think yeah, it's just it's, I explained it. They're the worst defense in the league. I think the DeJounte thing hasn't quite worked just because I mean if you're gonna have a team be like an offensive powerhouse, it's tough to have two primary guy like ball handler guys that play very, very differently. And the better primary ball handler um is 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 the shooter and the other guy is is less of a floor spacer. So yeah, that it kind of makes it tough, but I, I think they're I think they're solid. I think this is a team that if they sneak into the to the if like if they're in the play in and, and they got to play a higher seed, they'll win a few games maybe. Might well, we got they, we got we got Bojan free from Detroit. It's time to free Bogey from Atlanta. We, 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 we <laughs> hey man, we free Bogdan Bogdanovich now. Bogey, Bogey he gets him up. He's a flamethrower, dude. That guy's yeah. never seen a shot he didn't like. Yeah, free. Bogey. I need him free to do Bogey. that now. Free Bogey. How does the play in one more time? Because I, I, I'm the play in tournament works seven plays eight, uh -huh. seven, nine eight plays ten. Nine so if plays you're in the seven or eight spot, you seven, just have eight, to win one game. Eight right, the seven, seven eight team, and eight, the whoever wins that game eight. is in. And the loser of nine seven, eight, ten seed will play the yeah. winner of nine ten for the eight. Yeah. And the nine ten loser is out. Yeah, they just mm -hmm. yeah. Well, nine ten loser is out. I got in it. Two games if you're nine ten, gotta win one game if you're seven eight. Yeah, got it. Yo, we just got a new member. Shout out to JG. Uh, appreciate you for oh, coming Jay. to the show. Shout out to Jalen Green. Shout out to Jalen Green. 
Shout out to JG. <laughs> also, shout out that broken. Mr. Life Wentworth. Yeah, JG Wentworth, man. <laughs> My money and I need it now. <laughs> that, was, that was so disrespectful. <laughs> All right, y'all. So, uh, the Hawks just got on the board at what was that? 22. 22. All right, at 21, rounding out the bottom third of the league. You guys have a sneaky suspicion on who this may be? Gotta be the Balls. Bulls, right? <laughs> Bulls I think or Rockets. I, I think it's Houston. No way I got the, the the Bulls better than uh than than the Rockets, bro. Hey, we've been we've been bad for a little while. I think, it's, I, I, think it's, I think it's the Bulls. I don't mind. I think Chicago can be below Houston, but I think the next two teams have to be Chicago and Houston, in some order. Maybe the Jazz mix in. I think the Jazz are a little bit better than both those teams. Yeah, yeah the Jazz are better than us. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, Jazz um, who's your who's your team, Mars? Houston. Okay. For this season. So no. Yeah, for now. I was gonna say it sounded like you were a Thunder fan, and then it sounded like you're a Warriors Whoa. fan for a little bit. Oh no, I wasn't. A, the, th- the Thunder is my next team. They're not my team yet. They're my next okay. Team. But so I was a Warriors. To put things into Warriors. context. Put everything into perspective. He was dating the Warriors when they were in their prime. No, he wasn't dating them. It was way more serious than that, Ron. Wait, no. so they were engaged. <laughs> way huh? more serious than that. They were it's engaged. Not- they sent they sent out okay, invitations and then to I the wedding. Them, and I saw them going down the path of drugs. Yes. And I left. Drugs is crazy. Just dumped them. Just dumped them, just like that. Just dumped them. Unconditional hey, love, crazy, Marcy, You can't. I, 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 don't I, don't I, don't I don't believe in unconditional love. I, I gotta let be loyal. Let them, let them, I see let them one person the start getting first. all aggressive all the oh. time, start punching people. You're, I'm good on that. You're polygamous, bro. All the yeah. other guys in denial about being washed. Mm. I'm like, nah, this this is a bad situation. Let me just go to this other team. Bro, and then not, once they not, get rid of Jalen Green, who's Green, your you know, so who's your main? If you got like a few like side chicks, like who's the main one? No, he didn't have a bunch of them. Mm-mm, he didn't. Uh-uh. It, nah, it, 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 it varied. I was loyal, I was loyal to one, Golden one State. One at a time. Yes, lost it it While it lasted, I was loyal to Golden He's, State. You're afraid it, you got commitment issues then. No, I think I'm I'm when I'm committed, I'm committed, but you No, you're not Mars because you just, no, 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 nah, I'm, I'm just, I just wrong, have a very, I just have a very wrong, short speech. If you do me wrong, I don't need to say loyal to that. I'm, I'm saying, which one was she not mistaken? Right. Good big question, ox, Big Ox, do if I'm wrong. not mistaken, did we not hear Mars say before the trade deadline, if they traded such and such, such and such, he was out on Houston? They would have done okay, me wrong. See. Yes, they would have done me wrong. He said he was on his way to Did he just say he just got involved with them? That he was out. If you trade Jalen Green, you did me wrong, which means I'm out. I'm not staying for that. I'm not staying for that. You did me wrong. What? <laughs> I think Jalen Green gonna come off the bench after the All Star break. That's borderline enough for me to leave. But I'm gonna let it slide. So I'm gonna still be a Houston fan. But when they trade him this off season, I'm out. Okay, see here I come. <laughs> hit, hit right, your so... point, Slim. Hit your point, Slim. The side chick. He already telling her when he leaving. His yeah. main chick. Hey he's man, already, I dated. Already, I dated girls like that. They got the next one ready. As soon as, as soon as I say something that rubbing the wrong way, they, they go on. That's just intelligence. On. That's just intelligence to be prepared. I don't know you're a scumbag. You are I'm prepared. I'm prepared. Oh. If you don't do me wrong, I'm not gonna leave. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be there. I'll if you leave do me at, wrong. I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna stay. I'll leave it. We got different views of what commitment is. Yeah. That's, I'll leave it at that. I'm committed until you do me wrong. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm, not about to, I'm not about to just look like an idiot staying while you just be doing doing me dirty every day. Like, nah. What, what do I look like? But you want okay, you want OKC to accept KD back with open arms. You're a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. Bro. <laughs> the worst. You're a hypocrite. Yeah, it's the worst. It's the okay, worst. Because OKC is the prize. KD's the prize. KD's the prize. OKC should welcome the prize. You don't have to go to OKC. OKC would be lucky to have KD. That's why it's different. OKC would be lucky to have me when I leave Houston. I am 100% confident, Marge. You're the worst. All right, All right. I'm going. getting back to it at 21, the
The Memphis Grizzlies at 25, Blazers at 26, Charlotte Hornets at 27, San Antonio Spurs at 28, the Wizards at 29, and the Pistons dead last mm. at 30. This look like a bottom third of the league. We, we, we got this right. Chat? Yeah. I see so. Yeah. The only team that I think has an Close argument enough. to be the only team I think that has an argument to not be bottom ten is the Hawks. If you're very optimistic, every other yeah, team that's, I think that's is fair. different. I, I can agree with that. That's fair. They also have the best player of these teams too. Facts. Yeah, of the next ten teams too. But are you sure about that, Moss? Because I'm I thought, confident. I thought Wimby. I thought you had Wimby. Right. I'm sure. I I'm never, yeah. I I, 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 picked, I picked Wimby because I didn't think anyone else was going to pick him. But I think you could definitely make the case Trey Young's better than him. But they're the two best, yeah. When the end, trade okay. the two best. You can, you can definitely say that. Uh, All right, give me, at give me 20. triple J. Oh yeah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, me at too. twenty, what direction do you guys think this is headed? Houston, in? Houston, Houston. Um, yeah, I, I, Houston for sure. Yeah, I got Houston on mine. I right, Utah. You think All they're right, better well, than Utah? I got Utah I right before them. I had, I had Atlanta, but with the way this is going, it's got to be Houston. Okay, it doesn't have to be Houston. Let's let's calm down. It doesn't have to be. <laughs> it is indeed the Houston Rockets. Now. Yeah, you lucky. You lucky. Fred Van Vliet and Tari Eason injured. That's that's why we would be top ten. <laughs> Tari Eason would would definitely propel the the Rockets to top ten team in the NBA. Exactly. Exactly. Maybe that's top all, six. That's all the, hey, if we had Tari Eason for the whole year, hmm, that's a, that's a, that's, a, that's a hell of a team right there. You guys are lucky he's been out. <laughs> All right, getting back to it, we have next the Utah Jazz at mm -hmm. 19. Okay, I agree with that. I think now is where you see, like, there's a, there's a like, even though it's going to be 18 and 19, there's a tier between the team at 19 and the team at 18. Like, like they're not close. Just because you're 18 and that team is 19 there's a, there's a doesn't mean that they like this. No, it's like this. Who's, I think who's that, next? The, the, the team 18 up have separated themselves from the Jazz and the Rockets and the Bulls and everyone. They've separated themselves. I, I got a cool question. Oh, go ahead, man. No, no, you got it, bro. I'm, I'm talking up here every day. <laughs> no worries. Uh, if yeah, you're right. Utah right now, um, just because they're in a weird spot with their roster and how good they are, I don't think they expected to be like this good after they uh, cleaned house. Are you are you buying or, or selling? And which guys are you are you holding on to? Only Lord. I, I would oh, say the same thing. Only Lord Lord and Walker. I'm holding on. Anyone Walker, who's and like the only oh, people yeah, yeah. who I probably wouldn't be willing to move is Lowry, Keontae, and Walker Kessler. I like Keontae too. Everyone else can go. I'm not. I'm well, not, no, I'm and not, Taylor Hendricks, their rookie, they just got. I'm, I'm not coming off Sexton either. I'm holding on to Sexton too. I think Sexton can give you good value in a trade. Sexton like can give you really good value to a team. Uh, Taylor, you, you like Keontae. You like Keontae as the one. On, depending on, Mars, since you brought that up, depending on what, I what is available. He, he can pass. Depending on what is available with, with Colin Sexton, if I could get something substantial, that's different. That's completely different. However, we're talking about Utah. We ain't talking about Phoenix. We ain't talking about Los Angeles, right? We're not talking about Boston or one of these major markets. We're who's not talking about Sacramento. Right? Who's giving me something substantial when we're talking about Colin? I mean, don't get me wrong. I was able to get Donovan Mitchell for Colin Sexton in Cleveland. I was able to do that. I was able. But it also cost me four ones, too. Only that part. Oh, the Jazz have picks? Yeah. I, it also cost me four that's, ones. That's, that's so, and on top of that, and on top of that, remember who their remember who their button pusher is up there. And Danny Ainge, you will lose your shirt. So these teams are not apt to deal with him because they know for a fact that I will end up losing everything if I deal with him. So I think the Jazz is in a space where we got to build it through the draft because then nobody's Ooh. coming to sign here. Nobody lose your shirt is an understatement, Chilton. Yes, you'll be, lucky. You, you, you'll be lucky if you leave with your draws. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yes, yes, you will. He learned from the best in Red Arbat. Yes, he mm -hmm. did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. All I know is John Collins getting packed up. That's all I know. Well, at least, Mars, if he's going to get traded, at least they're going to actually trade him instead of what they was doing in Atlanta for three straight years that he's on the trade block. No, we're yeah, not trading him. Okay, dangling him out him. there and doing yeah, nothing. Yeah, we're going to trade him. Now, if they're going to move off of him, if Danny Ainge is going to move off of him, he's going to move off of him fast as opposed to we're trading him, we're not trading him. You're screwing him up. And you're screwing up his value, too, when you do that. Yeah. Well, yeah. goodbye, bro. But, yeah, um... 
I'm for sure packing up. John Collins is like the first person I'm dangling around to see who wants it. Mm-hmm. Jordan Jordan Clarkson, he packed up too. Jordan Clarkson like 30 you now. So he So when is this when does this happen, Mars? Does this happen on because I call it check day on, on does this happen on on on, on draft night? Because I call draft night check day. Whatever you want, I, I got paid. So come get it today. Because after today, I'm tapped out. Yeah, yeah, that, that's pro- that's probably when it happens for sure. That's probably when it happens. Do the Jazz have their pick this year? They should, right? Yeah, it's a good question. I'll, I'll look up. With the uh, Donovan what? Mitchell, with, with the Donovan Mitchell trade, I think they have their pick and Cleveland's pick. Ooh, uh, Utah. Oh, they don't. Hmm. Who has Utah's pick? Not? Right. Because in the Donovan, oh, Mitchell it's, trade, it's, prote- it's protected. Okay, it's, it's top ten protected. Right, but OKC have it, but it's top ten protected. So they need to start losing. <laughs> yes, they do. Hey, put, you, put us above Utah. They need to start losing some games. <laughs> what are they Yo, doing? Um, so, but they, what, real quick, real Ron. So they, they got they got Cavs pick two this year. Uh, they don't it's, have no, just it says they don't only have, first round pick. First round pick this year. Protected one to ten goes to OKC if it falls out. Okay. Yeah, that's it. So I think the Cavs pick start next year. In 25. Yeah, next year, 2025. Yeah, I thought it was but this year. This year, they this year they need that to fall in the top ten. They need it to fall in the top ten. Why do OKC have so many of that? What trade was it? OKC and the Jazz. I have no clue. Hmm. OKC just have everyone's picks. <laughs> All right, y'all. Um, we have a tie for Minnesota's 19th. pick too. That yeah, we're the Warriors in Orlando. Really trade. Before we get to that tie, uh, Pirate wanted me to highlight something about <clears throat> the Atlanta Hawks. He said, "Carve this on my tombstone." <laughs> Inefficient D. Um, he said, "Munchkin MFers are a net negative." Thirtieth <laughs> ranked defense. Quote, <laughs> I highlight again, thirtieth. I wonder why. 19th in effective field goal percentage and 29th in opponents effective field goal percentage. Hmm. Whatever. <laughs> hmm. I wonder whatever it could be. Munchkin M F. And he spelled out the M and spelled out the F. <laughs> he blaming Trey Young, basically. Yeah, that's I personally Good call pirate. I don't I don't like that that take. Um because <laughs> I think that, and, and and this is something I've started to grow into, and it's really been like a bit of like an evolution in the way I think about basketball. But in the NBA, individual defense doesn't matter all that much. I think it's good to have guys, individuals that can defend, but at the end of the day, it's it's about team defense. Um, and I think a big proof of that is the fact that not only does Rudy Gobert, Rudy Gobert is an elite rim protector. He's the best in the league, maybe the best of all time. If you look at all these ratings, like defensive Raptor, which is easy, like essentially brother. easy, eat it, eat it, Mars. I, 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 it. I get the point he's making. I'm not about to, but, fight. but hear, hear, hear me out. Hear me I'm out. About to fight. I'm about to no, you're good. Um, think about the guys that he has around him Jaden McDaniels, Nas Reed, Ant Edwards, Kyle Anderson. Those are four extremely switchable. Pesky in the gaps, help defenders. Rudy Gobert is not a great isolation defender. He's actually terrible. You look at, I mean, it's the eye test. Watch his feet out of there on the perimeter. He gets lost all the time. He recovers well because he's long, but those statistics don't take in for the compensation that they do as a team defense to scheme for him. Like if if Gobert is, is on the help side and he's higher up guarding the guy on the wing on the weak side, they will, as soon as the drive starts, they'll just switch him and the bottom guy so he can help toward the rim. So, like, that's team defensive scheme that's going to boost his numbers that don't really mean that. And it goes the other way, too, to go back to Trey Young. Like, there are ways to essentially hide him. It's not that difficult in an NBA team defensive scheme. It's not all just because you got one guy on the floor that's six feet, like a buck 70. Well, number one, so how many can you have? Let's... Huh? How many defensive liabilities can you hide? Like I think many, on on the yeah. floor at a time you gotta have I mean one max and the things yeah. in the playoffs and that that's where it's different because right? in you the can playoffs only you have one up. liability out there. Individual defense would still matter. Damian Lillard really, is evidence of that. Damian Lillard only, is evidence you can of that. only afford one bad defender. Yes. On the court at any yeah, yeah, I'd say so. That means and, you need and, four above average, good to above, like average to above average guys. 
That yeah. would still mean individual defense matters in some capacity. And Damian there's Lillard so and Malik Beasley are do. evidence of that. Damian, one well, number one, Damian Lillard and Malik Beasley are evidence of that. Number two, you shortchanging Rudy. Number one, those guys in, in Minnesota, they don't switch nearly as much as you say they do. Anthony Edwards fights over screens. Jaden McDaniels fights over screens. They don't put Rudy in position where he has to be on a one or a two guard. That's not happening. Number two, when I watch Rudy on the perimeter, his ability to close out has gotten so much better because now he's not overrunning guys at the long ball line. Plus, when he gets beat, He's so much better at recovering than he was three years ago. I, don't, mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of people are looking at Rudy from what he was years ago, and you're not really paying attention to what he is now because you're still stuck on what he was. It's not to say that you're not watching. You're just still stuck on what he was years ago. He's so much better today than what he was years ago. That's just not true. Hey, real, real quick, real, real, real quick, though, Mars. Real, real quick. Hey, Ron, I'm going to text, text you my book. I got to go pour a couple of bowls of cereal. I'm going to text you my book. Love you, sir. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. But I, I, will, I will say Cat looks For the like... Kids. Kids. Cat looks a lot better on defense this year, and that's part scheme, part his awareness just looks a lot better this year. So I want to give Cat credit for getting better on defense and also give Chris Finch credit, unless there's someone else who's coaching the defense over there. I don't know who their defensive coordinator is. Chris Finch is a genius. But, but I'm going to give Chris Finch credit for that Timberwolves defense because Cat just looks really good. But I don't think I don't think Rudy Gobert is like the perfect example of that. I mean, obviously, you want to keep him closer to the rim, but I don't think – I think you want to keep him closer to the rim because he's so great protecting the paint more so than it's because he's so bad on the outside yeah i just think if someone's that great on the interior you want it's, to try and keep them there as much as possible it's he's relative though well there, but he's yeah just because so he's better doesn't mean he's now good like it's it's relative at the end of the day actually it is though because if you think about what happened in 21 so in 21 when he was off the floor in utah i believe they were a bottom four defense when he was off the floor because he made up not just for so much that those guys did, but how much when they dragged him away from the basket that he couldn't cover on the perimeter. Today, we're talking about a guy who's on the best defense in the league. That's not just because of him, but it's largely due to him off the strength of all of those guys, all of those guys, not just team defense, but the fact that when they're on the perimeter. So, for example, a guy like Jaden McDaniels, he knows that he can take chances because he's got a guy like Rudy who can make up for him. That's fair. But, but with that also being said, when you get Rudy on the perimeter, when you get Rudy on the perimeter and you get him in screen and screen and roll action, Rudy is actually good in defending that. And he's not only good in defending that, he's good in recovering to the basket. Like when I watch guys like Mars and I have had this conversation. When I watch guys like Luca, I'm a huge component, a huge component for me when you're talking about defense is your ability to recover. Because in the NBA, you're gonna get beat. Yeah. So guys like James Harden, I'm out. Luca, who's actually gotten better, but for the majority of these guys who won't compete. Rudy Gobert has gotten so much better at that. And because he's gotten so much better at that, individually, that makes their defense collectively so much better. Yeah, and I'm not necessarily talking about like pick and roll drop coverage because I do think he's that's where he's grown the most as a player from that 21 Utah uh, time to where he's at now because people used to attack him in the drop and, and just be totally okay with taking like eight-foot floaters and jumpers because he was so on his heels, worried about getting beat to the rim that he would give that up but um i mean now and it doesn't it doesn't happen as much is is what you're saying is he he doesn't get isoed out on the perimeter but come playoff time like it's going to happen and it's it's going to be an issue that they're going to have to overcome and they're going to have to be okay with playing without him on the floor we see it happen in the playoffs every single year there's always one team that's mm -hmm. forced to go small i believe it was memphis not too long ago mm -hmm. where they had to play without steven adams who was a staple for them on, on both ends of the floor all year, well, mainly on the defensive side. But I'm glad yeah, you anyway. brought that up. I'm glad you brought that up, Slim, because I watched them play against Minnes. I watched them play against the Clippers, and they actually had a counter for that. Because with the Clippers, in, in, in Mars's estimate, Mars and Ty Lu is the king of who? Oh, he's the small ball merchant of the NBA. Yeah, small sure. ball merchant of the NBA. So he'll throw a small ball lineup out. So what hey, Chris he, Finch, he killed the Porzingis Mavericks with that. What, 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 what Chris Finch did in his genius, like you mentioned, what he did was he recognized the mismatches on the offensive end. So they had Leonard, Paul George, uh, Mann, Russell Westbrook, and one James. more guy. James and, Harden. And, yeah, and James Harden on the floor. So what Minnesota did was on the offensive end, they threw the ball in the post to Rudy on rim dives. They threw the ball in the post when he would get switched on to Leonard, and he would just basically throw the ball in the bucket. When you Drops doing back, that, yeah. and, and when you doing that, now that's a counter to you guys shooting threes because you know what I want to do? I love having Russell on the long ball line. 
knock yourself out with rush shooting long balls all night long. If you got other teams in the Western Conference who are not as good as long ball shooters, because Slim, remember, there is no hiding guys. We already know who you guys are. Can we protect these guys? I don't think you have to. I don't think you have to protect Rudy nearly as much as you used to. I don't think you have to do that. I'm, I'm right, surprised. Fellas. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. We, we, we got to get back to this list. Okay. Um, and we do have a tie. At uh, 18 and 17, we have a tie yeah. between the Magic and the Warriors, and we mm. have to break it. Um, so I'm gonna ask you three. Ox hasn't texted me his answer yet. So chat, I'm gonna go ahead and run a poll, and you guys will be the fourth person. At the Warriors at 18. Let me see. So you got yeah. the Magic higher than the Warriors. I do. Yes. Okay. Oh well, I had neither of these teams at this spot. Well, who do you have better? Warriors at 18. I had the Warriors higher than the Magic. I have the Magic higher than the Warriors. All right, so we have two for the Magic, one for the Warriors. Chat, go hit that poll. And while you're at it, like the video. Mm -hmm. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. If they play Jonathan Isaac 35 minutes, I'd pick the Magic. But <laughs> Jonathan Isaac, bro. So good to see him like looking like himself again. Mars loves him. Mars loves that dude. That's his man. Hey, that's a 2K, 2K like my league fantasy draft. I'm taking Jonathan Isaac every single time. While we're waiting for um for the, the poll to finish, I got two questions. Uh Slim, I gotta ask you about the magic, and Mars, I gotta ask you about the Warriors. Slim, mm -hmm. you had the magic ranked the highest at 14 on your poll. Why do you have the magic so high? I think they're playing their best basketball of the season right now. I think like they're, right now, they're, yeah. I, I think like as of late, and, and you can whatever sample size, like maybe the last month, month and a half or so. I think they've looked really, really, really good. Um, Remember, they were a top four team in the league earlier. And she said it's not about record, man. Yeah, it's but I mean, I, I'm just thinking about, and this is, like I said, just calling upon recent memory of the results that I've seen against and, and how good they looked against other quality opponents. Um, I can't speak for early on because, honestly, I wasn't paying that much attention to them early on. Um, it was really after, and I'm like, whoa, Magic are like, what, what would you say, fourth in the – in the wet or in the east at, at one point? Second. They were number two Second. in the east at one point. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean that's when I started really, really watching. Cause I like I like Paolo and uh and Franz. Um, but I, I do think they're not quite as deep as I'd like a like a, a real playoff contender to be, but I think they're really, really good in in terms of where they're at uh on the rebuild, they're way ahead of schedule. Like Paolo and Franz is a legit duo. I'll like, I'll send my vote in, Ron. I have, worry, I have worries being worse. Mm -hmm. Sent it where? In the chat. <laughs> <laughs> you asked him, Ron. And he just told you. Uh, Focus, Ron. Okay, but so, like, so what's that? Don't say you sent your vote in the chat. Like, <laughs> are you, right, are so, you don't uh, read the chat? Ron admitting to not reading the chat. It's crazy. Ron, Ron not admitting the people, it, man. It, it, it's kind of yeah. hard for me to, you know, read the chat. I've seen his vote. I've seen his vote. Do the list and all of that other stuff. That's crazy. Well, on my <laughs> list, I... I <laughs> <laughs> On, on my list, I had I had the the Warriors eighteen and the Magic seventeen. I did. All right. So as of right now, it looks like the chat voted the Warriors. Mars voted the Warriors, but it looks like we have the Magic packing up the Warriors. So we do have the Warriors at eighteen. Uh, Mars, me and you mm -hmm. had the Warriors actually ranked the highest. I had them at fourteen. You had them at thirteen on your power rankings. Why do you have the Warriors so high? Um, since Draymond's came back, their mm -hmm. defense hasn't been the worst in the NBA or damn near close to it like it was before. Um, the Draymond Green impact is is real. Um, the Jonathan Kaminga becoming their second scoring option. Um, I was a believer in the Jonathan Kaminga post game, like when he came into the league. Now I think it's a real thing. Um, that little wrinkle is nice for them to have. And over the last month, I think they've been the best offense in the league. Which I mean, a month is a reasonable sample size i mean and sometimes coincidentally, it might, it coincidentally might just, mars since you brought that up coincidentally in that month who's gotten back in the lineup draymond green how about that how about that <laughs> you don't have to tell me about draymond green's impact i've been trying to how, how about that not to mention they just, they, 
They just put a certain washed it. fellow on the bench. I mean, that... Which is not going to... Uh, Mars, do not get sucked into this logic because I'm telling you right now, what's going to happen is, is he's going to start cracking the long ball. He's going to look like the old play. And guess what they're going to do? Why don't they put them back and then I'll move them back yes. down the power rankings. But for now, they should. But for no, no, Ox, uh, they shouldn't. No. Not, look, if Clay, if Clay finds his rhythm, Clay's not sitting on my bench. No. Yeah, he washed. But I mean, so their offense looks great. Their defense, <laughs> yes. their defense That's is back. Y'all call it what level. you want. Clay's playing. Wig Wiggins I mean. seems to be figuring out. He's not like twenty a game or whatever, but his defense seems to be picking up, and he seems to be applying some level of floor spacing and just like tertiary scoring. Draymond Green can make threes this season, but I mean, teams still leaving them open, but he can make them, which is nice. Um. So overall, I think they're just starting to figure things out. And then I went to between well, between the Magic and the Warriors, it's in a playoff series, who do I think would be harder to beat? And I'm just looking at this Magic's team, horrific floor spacing. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I think teams are comfortable with that in the playoffs. Like Markel Fultz, who I was a believer in, his de refusal to shoot jump shots is detrimental. Like when you when you were six ten guards. You can kind of get away with it. Who else they play with him that that like makes that an issue? Because I think you um, can have. Well, Franz isn't much of a floor spacer. He can make him. He's not a floor yeah, spacer. Yeah, like catch and Paolo, shoot. That's all you need. Paolo's not a floor spacer at this stage of his career. In oh, opinion. Anthony. When when Dell's not a floor spacer, Anthony Black isn't a floor spacer. Oh. Jalen Suggs is hitting it, but I mean, do you consider Jalen Suggs a floor spacer or is yeah. it someone? Who I mean, I and I wouldn't even say Wendell is like like not. Um, yeah, he's capable. They're they have they're a lot of capable guys. Yeah, they have they're, a lot of they're, respect, guys. they're respectable in the fact that when Paolo drives, they're going to help off Wendell and he can make it occasionally. But they're not floor spaces in the regard of we're reluctant to help off of you. Like they helping off everyone on the roster. That's what I mean. Like they're conceding open threes to whoever's out there. That like, yeah. the only the only one that I'd say they don't concede open threes to is Jalen Suggs. Like Cole Anthony, is, but Cole Anthony's just cooked some defense. Like, if you want to put the defensive pieces around him, so you want to have Jonathan Isaac out there, who's another non floor spacer, and then have Wendell and then Jalen Suggs, but that's already four guys. And then you have what Paolo or France. I'd say France is the better defender at this point, but you'd have to, in order to have Cole Anthony spacing, you'd have to sacrifice some of your defense. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Cole, and I don't think Cole Anthony's much of a floor spacer more than he's a shot maker. Yeah, so, honestly, I, I'm looking those at... Those two things are not the same. Those yeah. two things are not. He, I wouldn't consider him a floor space. I consider him someone who can make shots, which is valuable. I mean, him being a shot maker is valuable for that team. But their floor spacing is just so bad, in my opinion, that I can't... I yeah, I mean... I think series that are easier to scheme against. The there, there's a reason Caleb Houston gets minutes. That is a good point. I'm looking at their numbers, and they really don't have a lot of guys that, like, shoot the three ball over 35%. It's... It's pretty. They drafted Jet Howard for that, but, and he can't even play. So I don't know yeah. if he's not ready. I didn't like him coming in, but I don't know if he's not ready or they don't trust him. But he was drafted to be a shooter. So yeah, I mean, then also that's why Joe Ingles is on the floor. He's shooting forty-one mm -hmm. from three this year. Not on yeah, crazy. He, he another one who can't play defense. I mean, shout out to Joe. Ingles. Joe, he's all right. Yeah, he's, he's he's one he's, of your little, he's one of your team defender guys. That's what he is. He's aware. He knows what he he's was, doing. But I think anyone that at one point on the ball, Joe Ingles is not staying in front of anyone. Did anyone at one point that was it that because at one point in his career he was a very very good like but then he like, tore, but then he tore his Achilles but then he tore his yeah Achilles. but he still got the savvy it's not like he's a yeah he's aware out there. but he can't stay in front of anyone well chill this is this is exactly why I said earlier months ago they need to package those young guys up and get them out of there you but, was right I was wrong I, I believe in Markel Fultz I was wrong there's no it's, I just you don't know, see it yeah. happening with them. I don't think Cole's a part of the future. I think you hold on to Suggs, obviously Paolo and Franz, and then everyone else is is up for respect to Anthony Black, but yeah. And Jonathan. All right, fellas. That, yeah. We got to move on to the next pick. Before we do, obviously, you know, the Warriors have a major fan who's a part of the power rankings. It's none other than Pirate. He also had a sneaky message that he sent through about the Warriors. He said, uh, well, Mars, you had him at 13. I had him at 14. I lied because Pirate had him at 10. And he said, ha ha, that's right. You called me a homer, but this is 4D chess. We've actually fared okay versus adversity. 
close losses, and the second most difficult schedule thus far. And now a very easy, easy remaining schedule. Ever read the tortoise in the hare? Anybody? Still <laughs> fool. Still, yeah. this is the logic right here, Big Ox, that I told you about. These dudes are going to run off like seven, eight straight games, and all of a sudden, the Warriors are back. <laughs> well, Warriors chill, are back. Two in their last 10 games. Right. Hey, man, the, Warriors, the Warriors, the Warriors going to win the title right this now. year. You guys going to have to and, give them. In the last 28 games. games, 12 of those 28 games are against teams that, that are non-playoff teams. So that 8-2 and two is going to look something like, like 14 and, and, and 4. So they're going to start rolling. Um, and then watch what well, happens. You wouldn't go into the playoffs on a good room. They're not making the playoffs, Morris. <laughs> All right, so next we have the Los Angeles Lakers at 16. Um, I got a couple questions here because we had some people have that had them low, we had some people that had them high. Um, but Chill and Slim and Damo, Damo's not here today, but you guys all had him at 17. Um, obviously on this list they are 16, so mm -hmm. it's around there. But why do you guys have them so low? Because they don't do anything consistent for me. And the fact that they try to turn it on and they can't, I understand that the regular season for vet teams and, and older players can be a bit of a grind. But at some point, you have to be consistent at something. And the Lakers aren't consistent at anything. And that's going to be a big deal when you're trying to win. They're not consistent as a defensive team. Their best long ball shooter is D'Angelo Russell, who's spotty at best. So when you got stuff like that going on, it's difficult. It's, it's difficult to think highly of a crew when they're not doing anything consistent. All right. Also, uh, I I don't believe in Darvin Ham. Oh, I don't. Hey, we got another one. Oh. <laughs> I don't. I don't. He's he's done he's done nothing. Like like if I'm a new coach and I'm trying to establish trust within an organization and and with a fan base, I know the fan base doesn't matter as much, but specifically within an organization and my team isn't doing well and I'm not changing much like at a certain point try stuff try something and and he makes some changes I guess like within the rotation um but from what I see from them offensively every night in, in a sense of actions and what they're looking to try to get it's it's pretty similar and it seems like it's it's players coach basketball you know, of like, hey, man, I'm a player's coach. Like, I really just let those guys go out there and I trust them and they get after it. Um, and, you know, he's going to run some stuff to get them in, in some decent situations. But for the most part, it just – it feels stagnant. It feels like Doc Rivers, Jason Kidd brand basketball. You don't like Doc Rivers as a coach? I don't I don't think offensively he's uh, as innovative as some of the other coaches now. I think he's kind of stuck in the dead ball era, to be frank. I like this guy. I hate, I hate, I hate the, I hate the players. I, I hate the players' choice, the pl players, co players' coach thing. Like, it's like, what do you mean? And what, what are you here for then? Like, I'm a players' coach. I let him just, well, no, well, coach, coach. That's what, you, right. that's what you're here for. Yeah. You know right. what, so what are you talking coach, about? Be a coach's right. coach. Right. Man, I'm telling oh, you. I want like, a coach that's... to be in charge of the team. I don't want him right. to be like, oh, I'm here to make friends with these players. Like, you can be friends with your players and still like, like, okay, this is what we're about to do. And you got to trust me in this moment. Um, and I think some players can break that thing. Like, obviously, LeBron is LeBron. If you're coaching a LeBron yeah. team, he's going to be your head assistant probably. That's just the I'm, way it is. I, don't, <laughs> I, want to, I, want the coach, I want the coach to be able to be able to talk to the players though like all right if one of the top guys like okay how you feeling what you want to do yeah they can, they can respond to that but then in that in that time it's like okay well this is how we're going to do that yeah and, you know and i need like, a little more okay, come variety on, yeah 100 percent. i 100 percent agree i can't just stand there and watch the game with your hands in your pockets <laughs> you made the conference finals doing that you hate us i don't know what to say i got love for darvin him i don't i don't want him to lose his darvin then moving along at 15 do we have any guesses for who would be at 15? So well, I don't know. My list, this my list has been good so far, actually. My, my mine was good for the bottom like 11 or 12, and it's been cooked since the Warriors Magic and Lakers. I, so I got the 76ers right here. Got the Sixers? I have the, yeah, I have the Sixers. Hmm. I got the Sixers too. right here. Slim, chill. Miami, I have them at 15. Uh, yeah, I got Miami at 15 as well. I could definitely see it being the Kings or the uh the like the Pels or the Pacers, someone like that. 
All right. Well, slim and chill. You guys are right. It is the Miami Heat Damn. here at 15. Did you guys not factor in the Joel Embiid injury in this power ranking? Yeah, no. we did. That, I, I did. That's and why I still got the Heat over the Sixers. Because the, I mean, the reason, over the heat. yeah, the reason I have the Sixers so low, I don't know when the Sixers are coming up, is because Joel's not playing. And this team yeah. about Joel was not moving. Yeah, Me no. neither. Oh, not even a little bit. Yeah, that's that's why I have the Sixers. So I right. just I just can't see I can't see the Sixers over the Heat without Joel Embiid anymore. Yeah, yeah, I, I can't. I can't. Yeah. Full disclosure, my ranking I did not. I'm thinking like for the playoffs, like who like. Oh gosh. So yeah. I got him. I got the Sixers pretty high. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, yeah, I would have had the Sixers I'm, I'm, higher I'm, if it was factor if it was assuming Embiid's health. Yeah. But yeah, we were supposed to be doing it for today, Slim. Yeah, that's my bad. My bad. It's all good. All right. Um. I do have some questions about the Miami Heat because Ox, you had them at ten in your power ranking. Yeah, I got Why you saw, and you were that like you were clearly higher than everybody else. Everybody had them around the 15, 16 mark. It's it's real simple, Ron. It's real simple. I know ball. <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> just Prove leave it, there, Ron. I know Prove it. He said, he said Prove the Clippers would figure out, man. Prove it. You can't just tell me that you can knock down long ball shots. That's not enough. Shoot them. <laughs> you can't just tell me that. That's not going to work. Shoot they got a ball shoot right here. Shoot, 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 shoot it. Shoot you break it. Yeah, I shoot mean, it. The, th the thing is, mostly, I mean, Jimmy Butler, they got, they got, it's the team. When they got the, um, what's my man's name from Charlotte? Terry Rozier. When Scary Terry came over there, I yeah. felt like that was a huge move. I felt like that was a better move than the move they were trying to make with Dame. They were able to hold on to all their pieces still. So just with just with the scary Terry um acquisition, I think that puts another spark in the heat. I mean, y'all know Jimmy, y'all know Jimmy games when they got him, then they then they go one for five or something like that when they got that's okay. Yeah, didn't, I mean, didn't, the, didn't, the, didn't the Clippers go up? Didn't, didn't the Clippers go up yeah, all five did. with Jim yes, Sorry, I told y'all to relax. Well, six, I believe. I told you, I told y'all just breathe. Empty your nose, out the mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's it's gonna be all it's gonna be all right. Mm -hmm. That's that's how it works, but they, they're gonna turn up. I mean, uh uh Spose gonna see. How to how to work it, man? How to get it done? If anybody can figure it out, it's gonna be Eric Spoelstra. So, I mean that that team. All right. And then Jaime Hawkins. I mean, we know we know what Jaime Hawkins is, and I feel I feel very highly about Jaime Hawkins. I think he was ready to be an NBA player from the front door. So, I think the team actually got better from last year. Bam's playing like one of the best the best defenders in the league. Mm -hmm. I think the I think the Heat really have a chance of making another run this season. Honestly. All right. All right. Keeping it pushing, we have a three-way tie for the next one. Damn. All right, we have the Heat at 15, but we got three teams that all came in the same place. And we got to figure out who's going to be, what do we got, 13, 14, 15? No, 14, 15, and 11. Or thir <laughs> 14, 13, 12. Bro. 14, 13, 12. Are, bro. What's, what's going on, man? Just your man. This is your man. We gotta yeah. break the three way tie. The teams that we got are none other than I mentioned them, the Sixers. Then we got the Kings, and third we have the Pacers. Okay, so we're we're trying to figure out fourteen right now. Who's the worst? Yes. Who is the worst okay. of the three? Sixers. I have the Kings of the worst, but I can concede the Sixers. I picked Indy, but now that I'm thinking about it, as bad as that defense is, and Philly losing Joel Embiid, I mean, to take 35 and 10 and 6 out of the lineup, that sinks them. I, I got to change my pick, Ron. Indy is better than Philly. So you got Philly last. These are the yeah. three teams yeah, I had. Honest, like, these yeah. exact three teams are the ones right. I had, like Orlando, yes. the Golden State Warriors, and the yeah. Heat above. Like, like I said, below. my my picks don't <laughs> reflect the fact that Embiid isn't playing right now. So with that in mind, I would say that Philly is the worst team because my biggest I, reason I had Philly at five, and I'm like, you you have you have the most dominant player in the the most physically dominant player in the NBA. I can't put them any lower than that. So oh, so the only reason it's a tie is because he had Philly at five. I know. I probably skewed this quite a bit. I feel bad. That's don't worry. I, mean. I put I put Houston at one for like three of these. Don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. But yeah, All I think right, yeah. So, so Philly at Philly lost makes sense. Yeah, I'm, yeah. We can All agree right. to that. Philly is fourteenth or eleventh. That was crazy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, so we got a two-way tie that we have to break, and we got the Pacers and the Kings. I have Sacramento at 13. I got the right. Kings over the Pacers. So we have what? So chill. Just for I got Sacramento. I got Sacramento at 13. So the, so you, so the Pacers are better than Sac, Chilton. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. So we have one for the Pacers. Mars, you said the, the Kings, right? I got the Pacers. Pacers? Two for the Pacers. All right. I got all right, all right. <laughs> oh, my bad. Go ahead. I literally I, I, I literally I literally have them. I, I have them right here though, but I have the king, I have it kings, then pacers. So I got the kings one spot ahead of the pacers. I do. Also, too, like this, your list doesn't necessarily reflect who you choose right here. It's it's up to you. So like, I you got can change the pacers ahead of them. You could still say the kings are if you want to. Kings, we're better, we're better than them for sure. I got the Kings lower than the Pacers. I had the Kings at 16. Shucks. All right. So we got the Kings at 13 and the Pacers coming in at 12. Mm -hmm. Uh, And as for this right here, I do got some questions because uh, Mars, I want to know why you have the Kings so low. Let's start with that. Do I have them the lowest? Yeah. Um, I don't believe in their defense for That's starters well, at, at all. The uh, Demonte Sabonis on defense is egregiously bad, in my opinion. Um, if he couldn't rebound as well as he does, he'd be borderline unplayable. Is That's he Kevin bad. Love bad? Is is he is he as bad as Kevin Love? When he Kevin Love was cleaning glass, he worse than Kevin Love because he's playing the five. If he was playing the four, he wouldn't be as bad. But he playing the five. He meant, like, technically, you meant to be like he's the biggest guy out there. He's the one anchoring that defense, and he can't guard anything. He can't guard in pick and roll. He can't guard in space. He's not even much of a post defender. So, so if he couldn't rebound, he'd be unplayable defensively. Like he's Vucevic level bad, in my opinion. Um, so the defense isn't great. The De'Aaron Fox jump shot that was borderline carrying the Kings offense to like elite levels this season. It's starting to regress. Now that offense is still great. I'm not denying how good their offense is um, in terms of like what Malik Monk is able to do. And Keegan Murray is still a great, and Keegan Murray can attack closeouts better than I thought. So shout out to him for that. But um, so much of their offense this season was, um, was being helped by De'Aaron Fox ability to make jump shots. And that has started to, I believe, regress back to the mean in terms of how good he is as a three-point shooter. And I think that's why the Kings are starting to struggle because so much of their offense was predicated on De'Aaron being able to capitalize on people going under screens or whatever the case and make those shots. Because around the rim, he hasn't been great this year. I don't know what the reason for that is. Maybe it's just a down year, but around the rim, he hasn't been as good as he's looked in previous years. So that's been that's been kind of concerning. So that's why I'm lower on the Kings. <clears throat> Maybe the bonus is defense, but also De'Aaron regressing as a shooter. And Malik Monk needs to play more. I, I, Malik Monk needs to play more, in my opinion, because he's really good. So that's, that's that was the problem too with, with De'Aaron so far, as far as like the mid range, even the floater, that turnaround. It's still good. It's just not as good as it was. Like you know, what I mean, like he's he's still making it, but it's just not as as automatic as, as it usually was right. and um the inconsistency with kevin herter is killing us the fact mm. that our uh, offense though because kevin Herter competes on defense and he's actually a pretty solid rebounder too um but and then not making a trade for harrison barnes at the trade deadline which is not a knock to harrison Barnes because like i said i love harrison but that was the move we needed a bigger power forward somebody that can rebound and uh play defense to help us with help us with defense and you know it's getting scary, Chilton. It's getting scary. You wanted that I'm, Pascal I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm you wanted. Yeah. yeah, I was I was pushing for that Pascal trade from the beginning of the season. Mm -hmm. Yes, that would have made you guys like majorly dangerous. Mm -hmm. Thought we but, had it, but yeah, uh, that's why I'm lower on the Kings. But all right, fellas, back to the list at eleven. You can see we have the New Orleans Pelicans hmm. at eleven. Okay, that's valid. Hmm. Right outside the top 10. Um, that rounds out our our next 10, our middle 10. From 11 to 20, we have the Pelicans at 11, Pacers at 12, Kings at 13, Sixers at 14, Heat at 15, Lakers at 16, the Magic at 17, Golden State Warriors at 18, 
Utah Jazz at 19, and the Houston Rockets come in at 20. Chat, let us know if we got this 10 right. Uh, and before we move on from this, Chill Town. Yes, sir. I got to ask you, because you were the highest on the Pelicans. You actually had them at number six. Yep. Why are you so high on the Pelicans? They've actually been really good this season, right around that five to eight spot. They've been really good. The one thing that I really dig about them is that Zion's been healthy. And with Zion on the floor, he brings a different element to them offensively. He, he enables Brandon Ingram to play in the mid-range because Zion attracts so much attention. Zion, you put him in the dunker spot. He's been able to convert there. I don't like the fact that he doesn't rebound as much and he does get lost a little bit on defense. But guys like Valanchunas who rebounds, guys like Herb Jones make up for that. Guys like Trey Murphy who cracked the long ball. I think that those guys – are so much better and sneakier than we're paying attention to. I really like what they're doing down there in New Orleans. I still wish that they had a lead guard, like a Mike Conley type of guard. I think that they're a top three seed in the West. I thought they were going to push for a, a true one at the trade deadline. Honestly, yeah. um, I thought maybe they could put together a tantalizing package for Darius Garland, um, but it didn't happen. But either way, what they've been doing is they've been yeah. putting Zion at the one. And they tried it early on in the season when they weren't totally healthy. And you got like Dyson Daniels and Najee Marshall playing like heavy rotation minutes when those minutes would be taken by Herb and, right. uh, and CJ. But uh, it looks good now. And it's really like, like you said, it's just because he's got so much gravity. Yeah. Um, and he's not this exceptional playmaker, but he can make the, the, the read that's right in front of him of, oh, that help defender just came from here. I'm at the rim. I can either – just finish because he's going to be late, or I can dish it to like a, a Herb or a Trey. I mean, Trey shoots the leather off the freaking ball, dude. And I've he's, really been paying attention. So I've really been paying more attention to Brandon Ingram playing in the mid range. I've really been paying attention to that. Efficient, like, efficient as hell. Seeing, seeing how good he is, and he's been really good, man. He, I, I didn't realize how much space he creates. Just so I, I, I wasn't a big fan of him when he was with the Lakers. I thought he was soft. I thought he didn't yeah. really play that hard. But watching him when he's in New Orleans, he creates a lot of space. He gets guys off of him. He's one of the better one-on-one -on -one players in the game. And when you got guys like Zion that's healthy and you interchange him, where one minute uh, Coach Green is putting him in the dunker spot, but then he puts him at the one, and that, that actually condenses the defense where they ended up gravitating toward him. He'll kick out to CJ. He'll kick out to Brandon Ingram, who knocks down shots. He'll even kick out the Alvarado, who gives them good minutes. I like what they're doing in New Orleans. I do. Yeah. Big Ox already told me if Sacramento had to see them in round one, he out. He hates it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a big I'm fan going, of this I won't watch team. one single game. And Slim, you brought up Trey Murphy. That's really my guy over there. Trey, okay. I think Trey Murphy's one of the more slept-on players in the league. Mm -hmm. He's big, big, athletic, sniper, a go dunk on you too. A solid defender as well. And that's the thing that I do like about the Pelicans. I think that they have dynamic defenders. Trey Murphy, Herb Jones, Alvarado. Um, so I I, I just I, I like them over there. I, Brandon Ingram, he's not too bad of a defender as well. I like what they got on the wing uh, in those four guys. And then obviously you throw CJ and Zion in there. Valanchunas as well. I, I, I like what they brewing over there. But back to this top ten. Uh, here we go, fellas. Time to get down to the nitty gritty. At 10, any predictions? I'm waiting for the Bucks to show up. That's what I got. I got Milwaukee at 10. I had yeah. them at one, so they might not. Be I got them at 10. I have the Pelicans above the Bucks, so I'm just waiting for them to show up. So we I can see the, the Mavs popping up here. Oh, I, have the I got the Mavs. Or the I don't Bucks. Think the Mavs going to show up. Who else can it be if it's not the Bucks? Uh, well, maybe Phoenix. Maybe Phoenix. Well, it is the Mavericks, indeed. Um, we have a couple yeah. people that had them high and a couple people that had them low. So, um, Mars, you actually, you and you, Jalen had him at fifth, you had him at six. Big Ox, you had him at 14. And I got to ask you, why are the Mavericks so low on your board? I don't, <clears throat> I don't think that's so low. I think that's probably right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> straightforward answer okay are you are you thinking like have you factored in the the moves that they made because i know it wasn't flashy yeah, but it was i did no those, those, those were those were really those were solid moves i'm not mad at those moves i'm just not sure 
to how that's going that was going to turn what it's going to turn into um that's I the team that's the team like they 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 stocked up on the rim protection and they're just going to rely on just you rely on shooting it out with teams I don't know I just think that when big ox when you get guys like Gafford, who Mars turned me on to him because I was not watching the Washington Wizards. I'm not gonna lie, mm-hmm. say I was watching the Gafford. I, I, I a dog. Was, yeah, I was He's not watching. Part of the reason why they were why they're no longer bad in the Pistons. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I, so I, he turned me on to them, and you know him rim running and getting on the backboard and just being a dirty work guy. I mean, that's big for them. The thing I'm concerned with with that crew, him and PJ Washington, more than anything, is the significant games that they played, and be, that, because they haven't done that, and the fact that. With this crew now being what it is, everybody's considering them now a, a legit contender in the Western Conference. How are these dudes going to respond to that? Them two dudes in particular who come from playing non-significant games to now, yo, we're going to compete in the Western Conference. How does uh, – Chilton, how does how does P.J. Washington uh, handle grenades? Oh, he throws it in the third row. He throws it in the fifth row. It's, it's jumping hey, on the top of the backboard. I, I, does I'm just, I'm just, I'm just give you know. the move with one second on the floor. I'm just going to see that's more like, like four. Man. More like four, Maul. It's like six in seconds. In no Luka situation is PJ taking a grenade. I'm sorry. In no situation. Luka, they going to give the ball to Luka or Kyrie? <laughs> you got Luka. You got Kyrie. You got uh, You got Tim Hardaway Jr. before right. PJ. You got Jaden Hardy before PJ. Like, but hold on, well, 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 he's not he's bad. Scored. He's not he's not a bad player. But I'm just saying, in those situations, those are four guys that I would rather have shooting the grenade um, than than PJ. And I like PJ, but to answer your question, chill. Sometimes uh, you don't get the uh, truth, Slim. Well, I mean, a, a grenade is like a you know you you just get it kicked out at the last second. Like if Luca's got the ball with five seconds left, or Kyrie or THJ, like. They're not kicking it to anyone. Be like, oh, hey, put something up. Like, no. Like, they're getting it up. That's what they do. But either way, I I think that this is a great situation for a guy like like PJ. Because I think PJ and Gafford are different in the way that we're looking for Gafford to be simple. Um, We the one the main thing we needed on this squad was front court depth. We had one true center on our team, and we had a bunch of power forwards. Oh, you're a Mavs fan. I am. Yeah. Shout out, shout out, Kyrie. Oh, he really is JD. Okay, <laughs> but uh, oh. <laughs> either either way, uh, like we need him to be simple. Rim protection was big for us. I mean, if Lively isn't on the floor, we don't have another center. Dwight Powell is not a center. Maxi Kleba is not a center. Um, they're they're four men who played there out of a, a a need essentially. But now you got Gafford, a true backup five, and PJ, who's a better small ball five than any of the other small ball guys we had to play in that spot as well. And he's serviceable at the four, not having a great year shooting like as, as a floor spacer. I think he's shooting like 32, but like he's proven in his, his career that he can be a guy that you can put on the perimeter and he'll drive closeouts, he'll make open shots, et cetera. So I think his job is going to be simple and easy as well. It's, there's not going to be a ton of pressure on him. So you, you, you talk a lot about ruining young guys and, how does this guy, how guys respond to this and how guys respond to that? I want to know how does Derek Lively respond to the acquisition of, of Daniel Gaff? If if his no. minutes, if he see, if he if he sees a, a minute a minute decrease over there, does that, is that not one of those situations which um I mean you 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 like to point these these situations out? Is this not gonna ruin the young fella? I actually thought that it would have been dope if they would have got Gafford in the beginning so lively could play behind him because I thought he was a project coming right in. From the beginning, I thought he was a project. I didn't think that he was a guy who should have been playing right from the door. I think Luca makes him look a lot better than what he is. And I think mm-hmm. the fact that him playing behind Gaffett and him seeing how you can get to angles, how you can dive to the rim, how you can play defense, I think that that's going to help him more than it's going to hurt him. I don't think that he's one of those guys that should be playing right from the door. I, I thought that he'd be a good, I thought that he'd be a good big in Dallas, but I thought that he was a project. And I think having Gaffett, I think that's going to help him. All right, y'all, moving along, as you can see, at number nine, the New York Knicks are coming in. We cool That's where I had them. This Bucks team is team is escaping right now. They are garbage, Mars. <laughs> they are. Yo, hold on. Just... And all right, well, since we're here, I guess, like, you guys are just on my guys like that. The Bucks are next, but I'm – 
you guys are saying they're garbage. Chill. I don't think you they're garbage. Been, you had they're just not. Game. They're not. They're not. Or you had them at them. eleven. Like yeah, that. they're not better than the Mavs or the Knicks, but the Mavs. They're not better. They're them. not better than the Mavs or the Knicks. No. The Knicks I'm, are almost better than the Knicks. I have the conversation about the Knicks. They're not better than the Mavericks. I can't wait for the Bucks to scrape the Knicks in the playoffs. Matter of fact, we want the Knicks. We that's want you, that's because you don't want the Pacers. That's no, why, we for that reason, fight. right there, you don't want nothing to do with them. <laughs> nothing. Let's be clear about that right now. You want nothing to guess. Exactly. <laughs> you don't want nothing to do with them. You already hey, know. Hey, but hold on. Nah, nah. I don't want them two teams to play for two different reasons because, you know, I got two agendas to push with both of those teams. What's the main agenda? I'm a, I'm a Bucks and I'm a Halliburton fan. Is what What's the main agenda? Okay, there we go. Okay. Then but the, the Bucks at eight. We, we feel a type of way about this? We think that should be lower? I had them at 10. I'd put them below both these teams that are like the Knicks and Mavs, but other than that, yeah, that's fine. I'm not. Gonna I had them at it. ten. I had them better than the Mavs, and I'm a I'm a Mavs fan. I just like at the end of the day, what Giannis does on the floor is is so unique and special um, that you can't. I don't know. I obviously, like I said, I'm conflicted because I don't think Doc Rivers is that great of a coach. But I still had them at ten. I still think they're a good team. Yeah. Running and dunking is very unique. Don't say that. Don't get me started. There's a there's a certain skill level to, to running and dunking. He's a yeah. playmaker. He's an incredible playmaker, too. There's, there's a certain skill level to running and dunking. It's not just, this isn't the freeway Mars where you just run up on a car and the car gets out of your way. No, it's not the way that works. No. No. I said it's unique. I don't like uh, I I said he was unique. Shots yeah. honest, man. He unique. <laughs> All right, y'all. Moving along at number seven. We have Cavs? Phoenix Suns. Oh my god! Okay, that's fine. This too low for the Suns? No, 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 that's fine. All right, and with the Suns, uh, how are the Suns? Well, I don't, I don't get it. You were the highest on the Suns at four. Mars and Pirate were the lowest. Mars was at nine, and Pirate was at thirteen. Man, Pirate just Pirate. Power troll in the list. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Any comments? Yeah, the, the, yeah, the Warriors are ten. Chill, ten. Yeah, seven, seven, seven. Oh, he. Oh, yeah. He has what? The Suns. He has the Suns below the Warriors. Okay, interesting. I mean, the they did just beat. Them. They did just. They did just beat them. To be fair, that's not fair. I don't. Know. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think the Suns at seven is fair. Considering I had them at nine, I think the Suns at seven is fair. I had them at seven. I had them at six. Oh. I wouldn't argue like the Suns above the Knicks. I had the Knicks above the Suns, but like that is a inconsequential to me. All right, fellas, at six, do we have any predictions? The Cavs. Okay, see. New Orleans. New Orleans Those are eleven. 11. Oh, you're right. that's right. We're there. I'll yeah. guess Cavs. Cavs. I'll guess Cavs. Cavs. Yeah. All right. Well, it is not the Cavs, but it is the defending the champion. Denver oh, mm. Okay. Any guesses to how we got here? People are moved by their little like three game losing streak down right now. Mm -hmm. I, don't know. I, I feel man. like a lot I of them. Oh, go ahead. I actually had him lower than I had. I had them lower than that. I had them at eight. Yeah, I see, had them at seven. Good. It's, a little, it's a, a, little, a little. It's a little streak they're on right now. The little mm -hmm. losing streak. It's cool. Well, and a lot of other teams that were in that like seven to twelve range are playing a lot better. Pelicans. Uh, Mavs, Knicks, Cavs, right. like so. I think they just drop down like by default. It's like when a college football team wins mm -hmm. their game, but other teams won bigger games, so they just go down because right. there's no room. Uh, slim, the Nuggets are bad in those teams. Mars is in London, he doesn't keep up with now. Remember, Mars, we ain't our, this, our, this, this is like when a games. soccer team gets relegated. I don't know, something like that. I wasn't, I didn't do my list, I didn't, do my, I didn't do my list predicated on what's, what's going on in the postseason. I think the road to the NBA championship goes through Denver, so yeah, I, 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 yeah, like right now, they're not playing great, so I understand it, but uh, they um, bad, they bad in these teams. And for further clarity, too, um, actually, Ox, Slim, and me. I guess you too, Chill. We all had him at seven. Chill had him at eight. Mars, you just happen to have him the highest at three for the Nuggets. Damn. I did not have him now. All right. 
let's get back into it. Mm-hmm. At number five, we have it's the Council third. of Thunder. Okay, we got the Cleveland Cavaliers mm-hmm. at five. Any discrepancies here? I had OKC at five. No, I think the Cavs at five is valid considering how good they've looked as of late. Um, shout out to Jarrett Allen for um, being a very good player. Um, shout out to Donovan Mitchell for being a very good player too. Um, do you? Yeah, like, the Cavs are very good. Do y'all think that Donovan Mitchell can be the best player on your team and you win a championship? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah especially with the you know with a, a good supporting cast. Yes. Hmm. We don't know if anybody can be the best player until they actually do it. Yeah, so, that's that's fair. I just see some things in his game that make me think otherwise. Just like he is a black hole offensively. But he, he, has, he, has, he has a willingness to pass. Yeah, no, I, 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 what does I was black just about hole to say mean? that. What, what black, black hole means that when the ball gets in his hands, it sticks. And that's not true. Not this year. I've seen, I've seen, maybe, I've seen his ability. Maybe Slim has a different definition. Yes, well, let's, I've, let's, I've seen. I've no, seen that is that is my definition. No, okay, okay, never mind. Okay, yeah. never mind. I've seen his ability to dominate as well as his willingness to to come off the rock. So yeah. many different times where I'm like, you when you when you can close a game with your with your scoring, you can keep the, the team in the game with your scoring, but also trust your teammates to kick that ball and let them do their thing. I think uh, somebody with his ability. That's you know that's that's a player that you can win with, and and, and this isn't of- this isn't a new take. I'm not basing this take off of like oh this year. Like this is something I've sat on for a while. So maybe it's outdated now. Um, because when I watch Donovan Mitchell, I'm, I'm kind of watching through that lens of like oh there's another time where Donovan didn't hit the skip. He just decided to pump fake and drive the closeout when he could have kicked for a wide open three or, or or whatever or drop off yada yada. But um, I'm I'm open to being wrong if y'all think otherwise. Well, I just want to hear why. Since, yeah, since, I, I would have put him back home. But go ahead. Since, True, which is the Cavs the most. So. I do watch the Cavs a lot. And since since you've been up here, you talk about gravity. Well, Donovan Mitchell this season, him getting into the paint, he attracts a lot more guys. He'd actually be a double digit assist guy if those guys can convert more. Because guys like D Wade, guys guys like D Wade, guys like um uh the fake shooter Max Struess, guys like that. Fake go, shooter? He, yes, fake shooter. The guys like that. <laughs> He gets those guys wide open looks. There's plenty of times where I've I've actually shown Mars the footage where he's actually had those guys on the long ball line or had them in the mid range wide open. Plenty of times where they haven't converted, and now that, that relegates Donovan Mitchell to scoring. So if if, that, if those guys will convert more, and not only that, him also getting guys like Jared Allen at the rim, getting guys like Evan Mobley now him being back in the lineup with that defense being what it is. And it's gotten so much better. I'm I'm really high on the Cavs. I do not have the Cavs winning the NBA championship. But what you saw from the Cavs last year in the first round against the New York Knicks, you will not see that this year. You mm-hmm. will definitely see a different unit. You will see a tougher unit. You will see a more poised unit. You will see a more experienced unit. You will not see the same guys that got pushed around last year. No. And, what, and-, and for what they've been doing – this season, and not just this season, as of late, how they've been rolling, beating the teams that they're supposed to beat, I'm really high on the Cavs going into the playoffs. I don't have them winning the NBA championship, but I definitely have them getting out of the first round. And Chill is not lying. He had him ranked number two in his power rankings. Yes, wow. I do. Uh, but yeah, I do. Okay. moving along. That's a lot of – is emphatic. We have four teams left. That's the best we record have in the league since January the Clippers, 1st. That's the best record the Wolves, in the league. The Thunder and the Celtics. The next team is OKC. Okay, it's coming. The next, next. Is, the next team has to be OKC. Okay, Are we sure? I'm so positive. Positive. All right. Well, no further ado. The next team happens yes. to be the Thunder. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm not mad at the Thunder. Are a very good team. I, I got the Clippers there. I got the Thunder up one spot at three. They just got to do one. Time I had the Clippers. Else. I had the Clippers at four. You know oh, what I'm about bro. to ask you. You had the Thunder at eight. <laughs> mm. Do you have an explanation for this? So with that, Big Ox, those other seven teams are better. Mm. Cooked. <laughs> I'll say cooked. That's not. That's a great I explanation. I think we're done here. That's it, Ron. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'd move. I'd move the Thunder up if they got that one guy on the bench. Go with them. <laughs> All right. Like, hey. yeah, Ron, I got I got the Suns, Cavs, and Nuggets ahead of, ahead of Thunder. That's all. And those are three really good teams. 
Yeah, I don't think it's crazy to have them at eight, to be fair. I'll go them up. Thunder's <laughs> lack of rim protection is very concerning. Or just, I guess, like mass in the middle of the floor on defense. But other than that, they're a really good freaking team. That's what explains, Slim, why the Lakers are like this in the playoffs. That's why these. Yeah, that's why the <laughs> Lakers want them, yeah. For that reason right there, they like, bring them dudes. Yes. Yeah. Imagine AD rooming off number three. Oh, my. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Fellas. Who is number three? Do they smoke? Yeah, real quick, Ron. The do, they, do they smoke OKC? Six the Lakers? Games. Six games. Yeah. Six games. Do they smoke them? Who do you Six. throw at AD? Who does, they, who does in, OKC in, even in, have on their roster? Let's go to Umber. Let's respect Bismack. Be Umber. Let's respect Bismack. Chill, they, chill. They, they they not, chill. Really, really five, five, is, five is love. I really, I really got them bringing You the think they out. smoke them? You think, you think they straight – Okay, see, okay, see, do. okay. See, don't got nothing for for Bron and AD. Like, nah, you know, you know, LeBron does his little thing where game one is a feel out game, so okay, see, can get game one and then run past him in the next four and games, then, and then the Lakers will go up 3 1. The Thunder will fake get a fake comeback, make it 3 2, and then the Lakers will close out in six. Yeah, they don't have they don't have a center on their roster. Bismack Biombo at 6 8, <laughs> Mars. This he is a big 6 8. No. Bismack, you know, respect no. Bismack. Bro, he's not. not I mean, no, he's, a, he's, he's a center. Sense, respect Bismack. Respect he's him. a center by by like technicality, right. but I mean, he's not a he's not a rim protector anymore, man. I mean, he's his knees look like they're about to disintegrate every time he leaves the floor. Oh, that's crazy. He's not moving Kawhi well. Needs, respect Bismack. Are you man. saying that Kawhi and Bismack swap knees? <laughs> something like that. They both got the same degenerative knee. I don't know. I just watch him move. I and that's something I put too much. I put too much. Uh, uh, I guess stock into is the eye test. I'm just like, man, we, no, don't. You're not, you're not putting too much stock. There's no such thing as that. Just oh, basketball. basketball. Just Trust my basketball. instincts as a scout. We got to get yeah. back into this list, but we have three teams remaining. Who do you guys think is number three? We have the Clippers. We have the Wolves. The and we have. I think it will be the Clippers, but I think it should be the Wolves. Yeah, Minnesota. I have Minnesota at three. So they have That's because you have the Cavs at two. Wait, we're trying to figure out who's at three? Where'd you have the Clippers? Yeah, yeah. yeah at four. You have the Clippers at four. I had the Clippers at four. I had, I had the Thunder oh, at three. So. I think I think the Wolves – I think the Clippers are going to be at three. Can I see what the All list right. we got now? Okay, if we got them there, then I put, yeah, Clippers at three. Okay, well, you are indeed right. It is see, the Clippers. Just, uh, I see through this, man. Everyone's wrong. The Wolves are not bad. The Clippers. Yes, they are, Mars. No, they Finch are. Gonna, <laughs> and, 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 not only are they are they better. Finch is going to out coach Ty Lue. I'm saying it. He's going to out coach him. You only saying that because you know I'm inclined to agree with you. Because he's <laughs> that's the only reason you saying that. You know I'm inclined to agree with that statement <laughs> because it's bad. Okay. He's going to run Kawhi at the five. Like. <laughs> and Paul George at the four. <laughs> the Clippers go bad. Though. The Clippers I mean, yeah, bad. and honestly, how – like you said that the way they've been countering that small ball uh, thing is by like, okay, we're going to like throw the ball to Rudy rim running. Like how many times are you going to – like he might make two in a row, but he's also prone to miss the next four because – No, he isn't. He, Rudy, is, Rudy is one of the highest percentage – Around when he's the rim, dunking, yeah, because he's yes. he only shoots dunk like his only shot attempts around the rim are not only, but the vast majority of them are dunks. That's the so point. Like, That's okay, okay, but if it's not he's in dunking. transition, like you can't just throw him the ball right. down there and he turns around and dunks it every time. They actually like, did that when they beat the Minnesota Timberwolves the last time in the half court. Kawhi Leonard was switched onto him. They went up high to him. He got the ball. Boom. They did the same thing. Russ switched onto him. He went up high. Got it. Boom. Dunked the basketball. Hmm. So and now Slim, all of a sudden. What? With that being with that being said, too, we don't got to do it all game. Just you know, let's let's get let's, get, let's, let's get six and and enough and, to punish them. You know, that's yeah, that's, that's fair. I mean, not to you mention, know? I mean, they have cat. Like they do. Yes, they do. Like I know the I know the plan of action in the past has been you could put a wing on cat and he gonna just barrel over people and get offensive fouls because for whatever reason, cat just loves running into people. Like he gets away with it because he's his name isn't Yanis, but he be racking up charges. <laughs> but I mean, you go small enough, you have Paul George on cat, he can punish that mismatch. Like he's capable down down in he's the He's not about to do that though, Mars. Yes, he, he is. Yes, no, he's not. Yeah, on the box. Oh, yes. He on can. the box, he's absolutely on to. the box. And he chill. could, he could chill. And he's chill. gonna be out there like he this. Run three miles today. 
I'm on not the going to. <laughs> he's gonna be he's gonna you know? be tween tween trying is, to do all this. Once again, I'm inclined to agree with you guys because I have the clippers over the wolves, but I mean the, the Tim Wolves have counters to the Clippers going small. They That's do. all I'm not with like just play Nas but I don't believe in them because I just I I don't believe in their half court offense. That's where I'm at with it. Nas slow mo, Jay McDaniels, and, and A. I mean they can play without Rudy on the floor and still be a really, really stifling defensive they team. They can slim. What my problem slim. is and isn't that a good enough guy. playmaker. That's my problem. Who? That one guy that their yeah. best three point shooter. That's my problem for the oh, for the Timberwolves. Yes. Yeah. He don't believe in cat. He doesn't believe in. Oh, cat. Okay. Not, not one, yeah, I I don't believe in Big Purr. But we have to I move end. on because we're coming to the end of the show. You um, know Boston's number one, whatever. Yeah, good for yes, you. Yeah, yes. Jason Tatum. Woo, top five. Yeah, we're good yes. Eat it, Mars. Eat it. it. Eat it, Mars. Two, the Celtics are one, and it was Eat it, actually, Mars. Our first unanimous pick of all time, or since we started doing this, the Big Celtics bird. swept at number one. Everybody chose the Celtics unanimously. So shout out to the Celtics and their dominance this year. Uh, we'll see if they'll continue that throughout the rest of February into March. We'll get to our March rankings here very soon. But this is the list for you guys. We will be back tomorrow at the same time. Same crew, sort of, kind of. And Slim, we didn't get your top ten, but... Something tells me you'll be on. You got Mars stamp of approval, which a lot of people don't get. <laughs> something tells me you'll be back on very soon, and we'll get your all-time top ten. Oh, man, nobody I, ever, I nobody ever did that. Cool, yeah, he man. said Doker was a fraud, so he got he got <laughs> All right, y'all. We got the press box next, and right after the press box. Well, not necessarily right after the press box, but at twelve Pacific, three Eastern, we will have pushing agendas led by Dub and. Seven and some other guys too. So you guys chill go with, check them out. Chill with chill at five o'clock. Chill with chill at five o'clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys make sure to tap in and chill with chill at five o'clock. <laughs> yeah, I'm running you want to shout you out. That's crazy. You got about us, big eyes. That's your man too, big eyes. Let's make sure we remember that. That's your man. Okay, I want to make sure we. we All right, y'all. Later. Absolutely. Later.